time, y'all. Y'all already know what time it is, man. We're all sports family. Are y'all ready? Tar Heels fans, are y'all ready? Just want to thank y'all, man, for joining me for another classic episode of Legends Week, man. It, 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 it's going down tonight, man. I, I, I mean, I'm surprised I'm sitting down right now. I, I already see we got the legendary Jerry Stackhouse promptly at 9 o'clock. He, he's, he's on. He's about to send me the request. We ain't, we ain't playing no games tonight, man. We ain't wasting no time. We're going to get right to it, man. Um, Legends Week, y'all already know what time it is. What's up, Mama Reddish? How you doing, girl? I see you. I see y'all out there, Reddish family. Shout out to my Royal Sports family. Um, if you can see me right now, um, Stack, send me the request to join, and I'll pull you right on. Oh, uh, we we I, I see the audience is, is is everybody's tuning in. I see you, OC. It's about to go down. I see you, Jeremy Treatman. All right, let me see if I can pull my guy on. I either wait for the request or have him. See if I can pull you on manually. Let me see. My guy, the legend. What up, brother? I'm How blessed, man. I'm, I'm I'm blessed by the best, man. Good to good to see you tonight. What's good, man? Likewise, man. Everything doing well, man. Just finishing up practice, but yeah, just had a good one. Got you. How, how, uh, you know, everybody everybody tuned up. It was a good one tonight. Yeah, man. We just getting back, man. We had a little bit of uh, issues with you know with COVID, you know, for the yeah. last week or so. So we had okay. we were paused. So we're just getting back in the gym. Uh, this is the second day. Obviously, yesterday was a little. A little ragged, you know, guys. Had yeah, 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 yeah. So had, had more air balls than we've seen in a while, but you know how it goes. They <laughs> I get back you. into rhythm. Yeah. I got you. Well, you know, by the grace of God, man, everything, you know, is smooth for you guys, man. You guys are definitely my prayers, man. You know, I applaud you on what you're doing, just, you know, especially under the circumstances of what we're dealing with, the COVID and everything. You know, prayers up for you guys, man, that everybody's safe. And, um, you, you know, you guys continue to do what you do uh, in excellence, man. Appreciate you, bro. Yes, sir. Hey, um, without further ado, man, I just want to – Welcome you to the to the Legends Week platform, man. Legends Week here on Raw Sports, man. Um, it's definitely a pleasure to have you on, man. I, I've been definitely been looking forward to this. You know, to all my Raw Sports family out there, it's definitely going to be a treat. To all the Tar Heels fans out there, it's definitely going to be a treat. I just want to say real quick, um, it, it, am, am I pronouncing am I pronouncing it correctly, Kenston? Kenston, K I N S T O N. Kenston, Kenston, stand up, man. If it's, if it's anybody from Kenston watching tonight, this for y'all, man. Kenston, stand up, man. Kenston in the building, man. <laughs> two five two, no doubt, no doubt, no That's doubt. Where, hey, where it all started. No doubt. No, I did my research for sure, man. Hey, I just, I, I want to get right to it, man. Two things I want to mention, man. Um, you know, before we get into it, man. One, I just want to say thank you so much, especially with your schedule. Um, and, and the time that we're in right now, I know that time is super valuable. So thank you so much for, you know, giving Big Star and the Raw Sports family, you know, your time tonight, man. It's definitely going to be worthwhile. Um, two things, two, two goals that I have for, for Legends Week. Um, one, you know, I, I, you know, you, you know you're, you're a couple years older than myself, but, you know, I'm, we're, we're from the same era. And, um, you know, I witnessed, I didn't witness in high school, but, you know, college, a lot of the, you know, um, like, you know, McDonald's All-American game, all that kind of stuff, you know, Street Spiff magazine, you know, just all, all that stuff, man. You know, all the stories, like, I, you know, you're from my era. Um, so this is just my gesture and, and my opportunity to say thank you so much for, um, you know, everything that you gave to the culture, everything that you contributed to the game, all the, all the classic memories that you gave to people night in and night out, all the entertainment. Um, um, thank you so much. I mean, and, and you, you know, b besides like high school and just, you know, uh, college, all the behind the scenes stuff, you were in the league and played professionally for a very long time, man. So, so you gave up, you gave so much of yourself and you're still giving of yourself right now in the mentoring role, you know, being a coach and all that kind of stuff, man. So, um, this is just my way of giving you your flowers and just saying, thank you so much, um, on behalf of myself and all the fans and supporters across the country. That's the first thing. And two, um, you know, I, uh, my, my platform and what I do with Raw Sports currently, um, I promote, you know, and, and, and support, you know, current, you know, high school athletes and all that kind of stuff. So this platform serves as an educational tool um, for a lot of kids that are trying to get and, and that are trying to accomplish a lot of the things that you've accomplished in life. So um, by them hearing your story, the ups and the downs, successes, glories, adversity, um, you know, somebody out there that's watching, some young person is really going to benefit 
um, and be blessed by hearing your story, man. So thank you so much. That's what it's all about yeah. here on Legacy. Glad to be man. here, man. Glad to be here. Thank you for having me, bro. Yep. Anything you want to say before we get started, or you just want me to get right to it? Well, no, I mean, I just, I mean, again, I, I appreciate that. Um, again, like I said, this this game has been great to me, and again, a lot of a lot of things that are great things that have happened to me over my career, and being able to, you know, again, like entertain, as you say. I've just been blessed. A lot of people have helped me get here. Obviously, my family is is a huge part of that. Their support and love over you know all those years. Because like I said, they have wasn't always perfect, but yeah. you know, at the same time, whenever you have those low moments, having family and close friends that you can 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 lean on is is hugely important. And I make sure that I you know convey that to to young guys that I talk to today. I mean, they're, they're dealing with so many you know more challenges than we did you know in our yeah. era, right? You know, it's for just, sure, it's, yep. it's a different time and it's uh. Uh, a treacherous time, honestly. So we really got to make sure that this Generation Z, that we, we really give them the tools. I mean, they're, they're the smartest generation that we've had. I mean, they know they know a lot more at, a, at an early age. But with that comes, you know, just a little bit more street smarts that I think mm -hmm. they lack that, you know, they still need to um, reach back to some of the, the older folks to help them get there. So we're, we're glad to be in that role to be able to mentor and, and help help these young guys you know, reach their goals. No doubt. All right, well, hey, we're gonna get right to it, man. Um, we're gonna um as a um a way to warm up, just kind of you know, kind of kind of you know, try to get get us started here. Um, it's a game I like to play with all the guests. Um, it's called Ten Random Questions. I'm gonna just shoot ten random things at okay. you, and this is the only section during the interview where it's perfectly fine to give just one word answers if you want to, or you can lab or you can elaborate. It's totally up to you. Okay. All right, ten random questions. First, uh, first one. Um, your first slam dunk. Uh, first time you got you first time you had a legit slam dunk. Uh, sixth grade. I was in sixth grade. Yeah, sixth grade. I was in practice. Uh, I wasn't even on the team. Only seven and eighth graders could play, but I was practicing with them. And I yeah. called a, you know, got a, you know, got a, got on the break and went up. And I, um, I had been dunking like a, a you know, a soccer ball. And then, uh, but this, I had a ball and I went up there and it went in. So that was the first time it went in. Wait, wait, sixth, sixth grade, dog. No. Sixth grade. Yeah. Wait, I mean, you <laughs> was just in fifth grade. And, and and now you slam dunking in sixth grade. Slam <laughs> dunking, man. That was that. That was. Hey, you know, we always had those. You know, at the park, you ain't had that one rim that was probably a little bent or yeah, 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 a little, yeah, little curved in yeah. the front. <laughs> yeah, and then you know, and then all of a sudden, oh, so you were practicing. I had good practice at it, but then when I could finally get up over it, it was you know, it was definitely a good feeling, and I, I never looked back from there. No doubt. Um, favorite NBA player growing up. Uh, favorite NBA player was was Magic. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, did you have any basketball nicknames coming up, you know, with college, high school, summer league days back in back in the neighborhood? Uh, I mean, I guess like I just I mean stack was just kind of always okay. stacked to the rack. Uh, yeah. A lot of a lot of you know, my teammates called me house. Okay. Uh, so it's just an you know, I don't think I had like anything other than that. You know, yeah, it was just a, a variation of, of your name. Either yeah, stack, house, something name. like that. Gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. Uh, what's the most points you ever put in a box score, whether it's summer league, high school, college, pro? Um, I had 58 in the uh, AAU game. Okay. And I had uh, 57 in the NBA game. Okay, but, 57. Yeah. That was against uh, the Chicago. Bulls. Yeah. The Bulls. Gotcha. Yeah. I remember that. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's my career high there. My career high was uh, in high school game was uh, 48. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Um, what, besides basketball, what are some other sports that you played, um, but, you know, growing up besides basketball? Uh, football, basketball. I mean, I like uh, baseball. I, I played them all, man. I played all three sports. I went from one season to the next. Okay. Um, growing up, probably starting around probably eight, eight, nine years old. Mm -hmm. um, I played everything. So I was to play a little center field in baseball, pitched a little bit, a little first base. Um, I, I was a pretty good hitter. I mean, I've been just uh, I never really could catch up with the breaking ball. I was just a straight yeah. fastball hitter. <laughs> and then uh, football, I played like defensive end and um, little little wide out tight end. So okay, I played all sports. I think I think that's the thing for kids to do. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. think you should really specialize early. Play all those sports. I think they all give you um, a little bit something different, like baseball, the high you know hand eye coordination, mm -hmm. uh, football, just a, a level of toughness. That toughness, yeah. Yep. And then just um, but basketball, as I started to grow more, just gravitated. And all my brothers played anyway, mm -hmm. so I knew I would eventually gra gravitate yeah. to basketball. But, but football, you know, basketball to me was kind of soft, you know. So yeah, I, yeah. I was like, <laughs> you know, football was probably my first love. No doubt. Uh, what's your favorite food? If you had to go one food the rest of your life, what would it be? 
Oh man, give me a piece of fried chicken if that's the only thing there right now. I'm a little, <laughs> bit more, I'm a little conscious of what I eat now, so I don't do too much fried. But if you say, yeah. you know, one thing that I, I love to have is a good piece of fried chicken. I know that's right. Um, coming up in the '80s, uh, what was your favorite cartoon growing up? After school or Saturday morning? Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry, hands down. Hands down, Tom and Jerry. I mean, I I, I like the, you know, kind of the Super Friends and, and all that on Saturday morning and whatnot, but. Uh, Tom and Jerry at school, yeah. So that, that's probably what I was at the most. No doubt. Um, when you played for the Sixers and you was in Philly for those couple of years, what, what was uh, what was one of your favorite hangouts or things to do in Philly when you was in the city? Uh man, I was. Uh, we used to go down to like Gotham, you know, what I'm mm -hmm. saying? and those mm -hmm. you know, spots down there on the you know, Delaware Ave, you know, mm -hmm. those spots you see, you know, little club scene down there. Mm -hmm. used to frequent a little bit, but I lived out in uh, it was weird uh, World Wide West. You know, mm -hmm. when I first moved to to Philly, mm -hmm. he hooked me up with um, uh, Kenny Payne. You know, gotcha. Kenny Payne, who you know, coached with Kentucky for a long time. He had a house in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. So Cherry I had Hill, a gotcha. house uh -huh. in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and. It was crazy. I used to drop my rent check off. You know, the landlord was, um, um, I can't, his name drawing, you know, the GM, Leon okay. Rose. Okay. Leon Rose, GM for the Nets. Uh, no doubt. For the Knicks right now. No doubt. You know, he was the landlord. He was gotcha. the guy that I would take the check over to. So <laughs> no doubt. Crazy. Wes, Wes has been around a long time and has, has helped a lot of people. People, to, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, if, if you weren't a Tar Heel, you know, during the recruiting process, if, if, if it wouldn't have been North Carolina, what, what, what would have possibly been your second choice? Man, I guess up until I really got into the process, man, I was going to Georgetown. Like, you know, oh, I think and, every, oh, yeah? Yeah, everybody wanted to go, you know, the 94 feet, the press, yeah. the John Thompson, I mean, the mm -hmm. whole nine watching, you know, Zoe and all those guys come through. And then when I, uh, you know, and then I kind of gravitated more to the ACC because okay. I was, you know, right there, started watching more. Um, North Carolina, NC State, you know, Wake Forest, all those schools. And then it was just mm -hmm. when I went away that year for to Oak Hill, my senior year, it just showed me how much I miss, you know, my, you know, my family and my and, and fans being able to come to the games and watch me play. So that that had a lot to do with my decision to come back home and go to North Carolina. Gotcha. Shout, shout out to my man J Mac from from my hood in Norristown. He said, "Man, we missed out. I guess he must have been a, a Georgetown fan." <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. I mean, like, man, that was, everybody had that that Georgetown starter. You know. So yeah. Oh man, man, everybody had the Georgetown starter jacket, man. <laughs> For sure. Uh, see some good games, boy. Yes, Big sir. East. Last... The Big East was where it was, you know, to, for me That's at right. that time, just watching, you know, D.C., I mean, like Syracuse and Pittsburgh. I mean, there used to be some big games, Jerome Lang, Charles I mean, Smith. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just Perry McDonald, all, all those names for uh, used to resonate with me back in the day. For sure. Last question of the uh, 10 random questions. Um, who is a, a player or a couple players back in, in North Carolina, um, local players that, that, has, you know, that kind of inspired you? Um, playing basketball, so some local legends, some guys that, that was doing it before you did. Yeah, I mean, my my, I'm from uh, like in Kingston, where I'm from, man. My brothers, a lot of them are legends around there. I okay, guess, you know, like my my oldest brothers, uh, like they a lot of them didn't play um, at the highest level, but mm -hmm. you know anybody that played against them knew that they they could go. Like my brother, yeah. you know, he used to play like at the community college, and then he you know would play locally, and then he just joined the army. Okay, but, man, he was like he was getting like forty a night. You yeah, know, with, with, when they wasn't even really the three point line. And yeah, then, yeah. Uh, my brother, my brother Tony, he played at Florida State. He played um, overseas for like 12, 14 years. Mm -hmm. So it's just like those were the people that I looked up. Charles Shackelford was from my hometown. Mm -hmm. uh, Cedric Maxwell, you know, you know he's a little older than me, but again, mm -hmm. we have a, 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 a long line of, of guys that have come there and, and done well with the game of basketball from from our small town. No doubt. I appreciate that, man. Hey, we're going to get right to it, man. Um, How I like to, ha you know, my interview style, I don't, I, don't, I definitely don't want to get in your way. I don't want to pigeonhole you with my questioning. I want to give you the freedom just to kind of explore and, 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 you know, and tell your story the way you want to. So, um, I, I you know, I, I'll interject, you know, the way I need to, but I'm just let you know, just give you the freedom just to wrap. Um, so if you can, um, you know, st start the people off by just, you know, again, formally introducing yourself and just start us off. Um, where the uh, to where the the, the Jerry Stackhouse um, story begins, and we'll just we'll just we'll just we'll just go from there. Okay, all right. Um, Jerry Stackhouse, born um, November fifth, nineteen seventy four, in Kenston, North Carolina, to George and Minnie Stackhouse. 
the youngest of 11, um, eight boys and three girls. Um, pretty, pretty big gap between us. I mean, like I'm, uh, my oldest brother was probably, you know, 25 years older than me. So oh, wow. Like I, yeah, so I was a, my mom had me later in life. Like she was like, uh, my mom had me at 45. You know, gotcha. So he was, was the 40, baby, 40. baby boy. <laughs> yeah, I was the baby, baby. I was probably a, an afterthought, you know. No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, but I think just, just growing up in a, in a big family like that, um, you know, it just gave me a sense of, of, of love and family. I mean, I was doing the holidays was always huge for me because even though my, a lot of my brothers and sisters were older and had already kind of moved out of the house, you know, they, the holidays were when they all came back and they had gotcha. kids. I got like, you know, nieces and nephews, like my same age. Gotcha. So it was like gotcha. more so like, you know, a lot of people thought they were my cousins, but I was actually their uncle. So it's mm -hmm. like, so, um, but I guess a lot of, you know, Black families are like that. It's probably the epitome of dysfunction, and, and no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> but but no, that was just um, you know just just growing up in in a small town in the church. My family mm -hmm. was was big in the church. My mom was uh, was a Sunday school teacher when I was really young, and then she became an, an ordained minister. Okay. Um, my dad was is a deacon, so I mean, like church was huge. I mean, I felt like most of my life was you know like in church every Sunday. We was in in church for sure every Sunday, but it was like, to me, it felt like Monday was choir practice, Tuesday was Bible study, you know, and, you know, it's something else, prayer meeting, you know, so. All week long. <laughs> hey, it's, it's hard to hear. The audio dropped out. Can you hear me? I can hear you me now. I can okay. Hear you, you good. Okay, I said, yeah, it's like, um, those are like I was a baby, so I had to go. So, <laughs> like, you know, so it was like so, but it, but it was good, man. I felt like that, you know, gave me a great foundation, a great you know uh, rock, you know, solid, and I knew you know who was my my source. You know, so that's right. A lot of people that, um, you know, you see a lot of people kind of go by the wayside and make wrong mm -hmm. wrong choices and wrong decisions. Uh -huh. and, and I'm no way am I trying to say that I'm I'm perfect and I made you know, all the the, the right choices, mm -hmm. but I felt like I, I knew right from wrong. So I, mm -hmm. I really appreciate my parents for kind of instilling, you know, that in me and making sure that, you know, we, you know, we were going to church. I mean, we still right. right now, like, even though we're dealing with COVID, you know, my mom, she's 92 and she's, mm, still, wow. uh, she's still running service, man. Like we're doing wow. it on Zoom. Yeah. You know, and, um, so it's Yo, like, oh, that's a blessing. That's awesome, it is. man. It is, wow. man. So you got to, you got to join us one day, man. And we love, oh, 100%. We love to have you on. Oh, a hundred percent. Let me know. I'm in there. I'm in yeah. there. Yeah. I'm praising so we, the Lord with y'all, man, for sure. Me and the family. Please, I, we definitely got to make that happen. <laughs> That'd be a I blessing. Got I got, I got to see Mom Dukes in action. <laughs> yeah, man. She like she done that. She she still gets after it, man. Again, like still, that's like her. Her goal is still to see all her kids, you yeah. know, you know, come in the right way. You know, that's right. I think, so I think it's 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 still that man, like those those. That's that's what I'm about. I mean, I still mm -hmm. talk with her, still making sure. I mean, my dad. I'm I'm fortunate, man. Like I feel, you know, so many people have lost it. You know, their parents. I mean, uh -huh. I'm, you know, I'm I've been fortunate. So I mean, I've made yeah. it 46 years old, and I still mm -hmm. still able to. I mean, obviously they quality of life isn't what it was you yeah know, you know 10 15 20 years ago mm -hmm. but it's still here with me man so of I'm course thankful for that yeah when did you when did you first fall in love with the game of basketball like 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 besides besides your siblings doing it but you found your own internal drive like no hoops is is my thing i i love this game no i mean i think early on man i just had a, a knack for it like i was like when i was eight nine years old i mean you know when we were you know, before we were playing on the big baskets when they used to have it, you know, hang the baskets down and, you know, mm -hmm. was like the what they used to call it, the termite league. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I was getting 25 and 30 did. Right? <laughs> as a little guy, <laughs> as a little termite. <laughs> yeah, so it was like, you know, it, that, that was the thing. Like, when you had older brothers that played and, like, again, like, they, they were really good. They were known around my town as as, as great players. And, um, you know, so it was like when you came home, it was like what you had. You know, mm -hmm. and like that, that was the first thing. And then, so, I mean, I couldn't have been like, you know, I had eight. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I had nine, I had 10. No, nah, man, we had, we had 30. We had 20. No doubt. So, so that, so that was just kind of ingrained in me early on to, you know, that that's what we did. You know, we, yeah. we, we scored the basketball. So I think I, I knew that I, and that, that just kind of propelled me because I always felt like, 
because uh, I played against my brothers as I was coming up. They were, they were, they were my barometer. I tested mm -hmm. myself against them. Mm -hmm. um, every time they would come home, like I said, all those holidays, you know, and family reunions in the summertime, that mm -hmm. was my proving ground to know that, that I've gotten better. That, that yeah. was my, I wanted to, to show them that, you know, my game has had, had, had grown. And, yep. you know, so, and, and I was like, um, so I think that was, um, you know, I, I didn't feel like anybody my age could, could was better than me. Gotcha. You know so I, I think then that carried on all the way through the NBA. It was like all the young players. I, mean, I had a lot of great players that came in the league after me, but everybody that came in after me, there's mm -hmm. no way that you would better than me. I have respect for the old heads. No doubt. Saying. You know, so yeah, guys, you know, all. Mitch Richmond, but nah, you know, them, them youngins, nah. So, and, and I think just that alone just gives you a, a, a sense of confidence. And, yeah. Um, and that, that really carried me a long time. It allowed me to play, you know, play at the highest level for almost 20 years. So, yeah, for you know, sure. Just for with sure. the mentality that, okay, even though I may, you know, not have all the athleticism I have, I know how to play this game and I can, mm -hmm. and I can outsmart you. So I think that was, um, yeah. Um, that was kind of all my always my motivation. Yeah, hey, just curious. Like these days, um, when a parent you know wants to get the kid better, they got the skills and drills. They got the trainers, this and that, the cones and this and that. How did you develop your game back then? Was was it just just playing from sunup to sundown, or or did you have a trainer? You how how was it back then? You know, developing. No nah, man, it was again. That was it. It was like brother. I, mean, I don't even think I just I. I don't even remember anybody, even my brothers, you know, teaching me how to shoot. It was just mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, watching, you know, mm -hmm. I'm watching how, how they did it and, you know, just did, you know, what felt good to me. Well, yeah. I, mean, I changed my shot a little bit over, over time because mm -hmm. I found, you know, some the little pointers, some little techniques, but yeah, nah, man, it was just playing. Like we gotcha. were always, uh, I think it's different. Again, that's why it's so different now. We were always go, we are we going over the morning side, we're going over to Holloway. We're going mm -hmm. over the teachers. I mean, we, we was talking, you know, even though we didn't have cell phones and everything, yeah. we found a way to communicate to know That's where right. the run was. That's you know right. That's you know, right. Word of mouth was something else. <laughs> That's it, man. And then, like, my dad, you know, my dad, because he was like, yeah, and then my, I, I, my parents, my dad was kind of strict, you know. He, uh -huh. you know, he wasn't like, you know, they're running the, you know, running the streets. I mean, yeah. before I even knew what running the streets was, I knew I wasn't going to be running the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. So, For sure. It was like, oh, you, you ain't going to be running them streets. And I was yeah. like, what is he talking about? What is he I mean, talking about? I don't even know, know what that is. <laughs> but you're not going to be running those streets. So in order for me not to do that, you know, I always had a goal in my, yeah. in my backyard. So I, yeah. we were the house to where most of the kids in the neighborhood would come over and play, you know, gotcha. and it was like it was a dirt court. I remember, you know, vividly always, you know, getting all dusty and got to hose it down a little bit so there's you no know, <laughs> dust ain't everywhere, shoes. Yeah. You know, so you got, you had your, your your sneakers that you had, especially for that court. You know, That's you right. don't want to take the wrong ones out <laughs> That's there. That's right. But I think, you know, again, those were the, the little, little things that they seemed like, you know, minor things, but they were huge. The fact mm -hmm. that, you know, my dad was going you know, to make sure no matter where we moved around, uh, you know, quite a bit, you know, within our own city, you know, different houses and whatnot. But that was the first thing that he did. You know, whenever mm -hmm. we moved, he put that goal up to make gotcha. sure that, you know, you, you stay in that yard. Yeah. I know that's right. I know that's right. <laughs> yes. What, um, what, what, for, for, for the viewers watching right now, um, anyone who may not have seen you play or people that just kind of, you know, vague mem like memories or whatever, um, describe the, like at, at, at the peak of your career, you know, playing all that kind of stuff. Describe your game. Um, describe your strengths, you know, things you did well, um, you know, what coaches, you know, appreciated about you. Well, I think um, I think the biggest thing for me, man, was I was a competitor. You know, mm -hmm. that, you know and I think that comes from. Um, you know, again, all the sports that I played, I mean, I just wanted to win. I was, again, I wanted to, my brothers uh, it's from them, wanted to beat them, wanted to prove that, okay, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the best at, at, at this today. You know what I'm saying? And I wanted to do that consistently. So I think my, you know, it was predicated. My first step was, was probably the, the best part of my game, being able to attack off the dribble. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, I, I got better shooting the ball as I got older and I felt like, um, I, I went into college because I played like you know, around the basket. I mean, I, I was like six five, probably in the eighth grade. Wow! So, yeah, so it's like I I had my biggest growth spurt, 
you know, up until the eighth grade. And I, so mm -hmm. I thought for sure I was going to be a seven footer. <laughs> so I was, you know, I was down there working on my. He was a big moves. young boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump, jump hook and all that. So it's yeah. Like, and even at North Carolina, I mean, I played the four. Like I said, I okay. had the ability to get out on the perimeter and That's put right. the ball on the floor and drive and do those things. A lot of the dunks that you see that I did in North Carolina because I could get out on the break and I was fast. Mm -hmm. But really, my game was uh, with, with my back to the basket. And that really mm -hmm. helped me, you know, as I got to the pros to be able to where it was, um, you know, guys that I was quicker than I was taking them out on the floor. And I could be able to, to penetrate and get around them. Um, and, you know, guys that, um, you know, I felt that I was stronger. I'd take them down to the post and I could use my back to the basket game. So, mm -hmm. I did, and I was, you know, and I was like, cause again, I, I was a big shot blocker, you know, gotcha. you know growing up. I, like I led like all guards and blocks for mm -hmm. like, almost a couple of mm -hmm. years, you know, especially when I got in the league, you know? So, I mean, I was still had that mindset of a, of a, of a big man. You come into the basket, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to, trying to catch that. I know that's right. I know, so, that's right. and, um, and then I, and I did that with a lot of, you know, a lot of people that were, you know, surprised, you know, because mm -hmm. they felt like, you know, okay, this big guy's going to dunk and I'm, you know, I'm putting my hand up there, but that's what I, I know was that's right. Doing. I so, know that's um, right. But no, so I just think that was, my game was predicated on kind of, you know, speed and, but just, you know, going hard. I mean, I just mm -hmm. felt like you had to beat me. I don't, I've been had the best crossover. Um, probably didn't have the best jump shot, but mm -hmm. everybody, I feel like all those guys that I competed against, they know they had to bring it against me every night to, I know that's right. To, 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 to go, to go away with a victory. Otherwise, I know that's right. You know what I'm saying? We're yeah. going to battle. I know that's right. Hey, so, so, um, I want, I want, I want to, the next few questions, I want to section it. I want, I want to kind of break it down in sections from college. I mean, high school, college, you know, pros, all that kind of stuff. But but regarding your high school career, um, it was two phases. You you, you played at Kenston High, um, you're, you're for three years, and then you was at Oak Hill, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So so take us take us through your high school career any way you want to, um, okay. from like memorable most you know most memorable experiences, you know crazy games, uh, rivals, you know you know notable you know big time players you played against, you know some of your most memorable things that people probably still talk about to this day in barbershops all across you know. Well, yeah, I guess, I mean, I mean, we used to, in Kinston, it was called, like, the Terror Dome, man. And it was, like, my, after my freshman year, you know, the buzz was out. You know, mm -hmm. everybody, like, it was standing room only. If you didn't wow. get to the gym by, like, 4.30, you know, 5 o'clock, you wasn't getting in the gym at all. Like, no so doubt. the fire marshal was out there. The whole, it, it was that type of vibe. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was, like, people coming from all over. And uh -huh. so it's, like, you know, really, like, like you, you had to get there early. And, uh -huh. you know, so I think that was... Um, you know, that kind of fueled it a little bit, man. I just felt like we were like a traveling, you know, band, you know, everywhere yeah. we went, you know, it yeah. was the, you know, the biggest game for them, you know, Stackhouse, you know, coming to, come to town. So, no so doubt. I think that, you know, that, you know, obviously it gave me huge confidence, you know, mm -hmm. to know that, um, you know, that I was kind of on that, you know, on that plane to, to get to where I wanted to go with the game of basketball. And I just had to keep doing um, the things that I was doing. I mean, I started, you know, from from day one as a as a freshman, mm -hmm. um, playing against the likes of, um, you know, probably one of the best players that I played against in high school as a freshman was Jamie Watson. Okay, you know, he played with the Utah Jazz. You know, oh, oh, no doubt. Yeah, so he was at he was at a school called Wilson Fight, who was uh, legendary coach Harvey Reed. Okay, um, you know, who probably one of the winningest coaches in in North Carolina. Um, uh, and so, I mean, playing against those type of guys, Rodney Rogers was, you know, Ooh. was kind of, kind of coming through as I was uh, coming in. He was a senior my freshman year. He was a gotcha. senior. So it was like, man, those are guys that I, you know, Donna Williams was, you know, was I, I met him at AU playing, playing AU. That was a team that I had 58 against. Okay. You know, the okay. first time I saw him and uh, he, he probably had 50 himself. So it's <laughs> like, you know, being able to see other talented people in, yeah, in North Carolina. Uh, and then my sophomore year, uh, we, I think we went to the state championship, lost in the, in the state uh, regionals, lost in the state championship my junior year. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that was when I was playing AAU basketball with Jeff McGinnis. Okay. Um, you know, I started off with the Raleigh Stars, and then, mm -hmm. and then I moved to uh, play with a team in Charlotte with Jeff. And mm -hmm. Jeff was always in my ear about coming up, coming with him up to Oak Hill. You know, he was okay. so on this this national schedule. <laughs> like, man, we're going, we going to Hawaii. We're going to Vegas. Yeah. We're going to all these tournaments. And it just sounded like 
I was dealing with a lot of little nut stuff back at you know back at home, man. The yeah. recruiting process was becoming a little you know bombarded by coaches, you know, calling and everything. So yeah. I thought well, maybe this would 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 be good. And kind then, of filter, kind of buffer you from some of that. Just let you focus on playing and just being a kid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. And like I said, I mean, it was like it was getting out of control, man. I was like, and you know, I'm. 16, 17 year old man. I'm starting dating chicks like 22, 22. <laughs> 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 next thing you know, it was like, man, I, I I need I need to get away a little bit. This might be the best thing for me. Yeah, uh, sometimes sometimes the the influence of back home, it's like you just gotta get get away to clear your mind, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like again, like you know, you I just got natural haters, man. Like, since, yeah. since, like I hate to say it about you know my town, but I think, mm -hmm. think it's anywhere. I mean, you got all these people that want to try to pull you back. No doubt. And I think that was you know I had got a you know had got accused of assault, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like man, I was that 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 year, so I was going to gym. Like I said, I got exonerated and everything. Mm -hmm. Found out it wasn't true, but that didn't mm -hmm. stop it from being in the paper and the headlines. Of course, of course. You know, people gonna believe what they want to believe. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. I think those were things that just let me know that you know. And then once I did decide to go to Oak Hill, you know, what I'm saying all of the the noise was that you know I cost the state a ton of money because I left. You know, what I'm saying nobody yeah. really just showed that people weren't concerned about uh -huh. my well being and and, yeah. and and what what I felt like I needed to to grow and get to where mm -hmm. I wanted to go. It was all mm -hmm. about, you know, I was just looked at as a, as a product, as a inter product. Yeah, entertainment. Yeah. That's it. That's it. So hey. I was, I had a, so, you know, real, you know, awakening early, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people don't realize that till later on in life. I was able to realize that as a, as a 16, 17 year old. Mm -hmm. What, what are, um, so what are, like when you close your eyes and just kind of reflect back on those first couple of years, um, at, at the high, um, what's like one or two things or a couple of things like that you did or just like a you know, couple plays you remember just something something crazy things something you did that may have just had had people yeah. just like running out the stands anything. Yeah, I mean, I think it was man. Just like I said, we were we was dunking that ball. Like I mean, it, again, like it was standing room only. Like uh -huh. said, so and so just like when you come in there and and, and how we played, I don't th just Chuck Jones, probably one of my best friends uh, at the time. Like we were like a twin. I was like. We call you know it's like the, the twin tower, so to speak, no all doubt. the way the way we were coming because we played above the rim, mm -hmm. and you know, and we competed. Like I said, I mm -hmm. think that that was a thing. And um, but I think for for me, probably the state championship is something that still burns for me uh, because we were up. You know, I I you know we had a big half. I was up, and all of a sudden I received a lot of phantom fouls. You know, in the second half, and mm -hmm. wound up fouling out of the game. Oh, with, with a couple minutes, like like with less than two minutes left, up, mm -hmm. you no, know, up four or five, and I had to sit there for the two minutes and watch us come, you know, watch the team come back and beat us in the state championship. Mm, crazy, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. So and then, so it was like you know those those type of things stick. So it, so it felt like a little bit of unfinished business. I mean, it was some one part of me that really wanted to kind of come back and avenge that loss my senior yeah. year, but then again, like all of the noise and everything else that went yeah. around, and Hawaii, Vegas, <laughs> exactly. You know, national schedule to play exactly. in high school. You know, you heard so much about Oak Hill. You know, uh -huh. I took a trip up there on my own. I drove me and my mom drove up okay. there, and and like I, I actually, you know, I was like, man, we came in the back way too. We didn't even come uh -huh. in on the main entrance. So we yeah. just hit. I saw a little road that said Oak Hill, and I turned on it. Man, we was coming back through cows and everything. So it was like, <laughs> coach was like, man, they couldn't believe we 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 came in that back way. <laughs> um, but once I got there, I decided, you know, I was like, man, it was cool. It's something where I could really just focus on basketball. Yeah. Um, I, we lived in a, in a house to where, mm -hmm. you know, I was, man, I was like, I, I would cook for us. I was the mm -hmm. barber. No you know, doubt. I, I did no that. Doubt. You know, I had to, you know, you, you had, had to. You had skills with the hands. Yeah. The hands. Yeah. 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 I had little skills. I had little fade skills, man. No so, doubt. <laughs> so I think that was, That's uh, what's up. you know, but, but again, it, it gave me like a, uh, 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 like an edge up on college, right? Knowing yeah. that that next year that I mean, I, I had to do my laundry, I had to do yeah. things, you know. So I, that I independence prepared. gave you those independent yeah. skills, kind of prepared you for it. Right. Well, well, uh, t t t tell me about the uh, the basketball experience and like just some legendary, you know, stories or memories that you remember from uh, from that Oak Hill playing on that national schedule and all the players you may have come across. Yeah, I mean, I guess one of the biggest games that we had was against Rice playing with like Felipe Lopez. Ooh, Felipe Lopez. Oh, yeah. man. Felipe yeah. was special, man. Oh, man. Tell me about that, man. 
No, I mean we like you know we we, we did him in pretty good. You know, okay. he, he, you know he had some moments, but I mean he was just one of those kids that you know had got so much notoriety and so much mm -hmm. hype so early. That's why I, I think that that affected him somewhat. Yeah, you know yeah. I, mean, I don't think he would he could ever live it live up to it. I mean I think the yeah. only one that we've seen live up to all of that hype that early has been LeBron. Uh -huh. Right. So, and I think he. Um, I mean, Felipe. He, you know, he was the. They was. He was known as the Dominican Michael Jordan. They was saying yes. he was like the second coming of Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and he was. I mean, and he was good, man. He was good. He was talented. But I mean, I think. I, I mean, we just overpowered everybody. I mean, we went 36 and 0. Ooh, that year. Y'all went undefeated. You know, yeah, we went undefeated. I mean, it was kind of the. Um, you know, us and Simon Grant. Some people had Simon Grant's sheet team. You know, everybody was trying yeah. to was trying to get that, make that yeah. game happen. Yeah, we it, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. So we wound up joining each other in North yeah. Carolina. So. so tell me, what, what, what would that have been your prediction? Who, what, 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 you know, 93 Grants versus, versus your squad in 93? Or what, what year was you at? Uh, okay, what, what year was that? Yeah, 93. 93. Ooh, yeah. 93 Grats versus 93 Oak Hill. Dog, that would have been legendary. Man. Yeah, man. Legendary yeah. stack. So, yeah. <laughs> they, they had, yeah, I mean, they had a mob. But again, like I said, we had already previewed that. I mean, I feel like we had a game at Nike, you know, so that yeah. was kind of the same thing. When we went head to head, she and I went to head to head. I mean, it, yeah. became, it, it, was, it, it was it was all the way. I mean, yeah. we wind up edging them out in the game. Yeah, but but that would have been yo. Who you think would have won that game? What, what you think would have nah, been like? Come on, man, like uh, we went thirty six and zero. You know damn well I didn't feel like we gonna lose. <laughs> you know, no I mean, we, we we had to argue that one down to the day. But I'm glad um, I'm glad we were able to link up, man. We. But man, that's man we want we want we wanted to make that we wanted to make that one happen for sure. That would have been special, man. And you know that was before YouTube, before social media. Like you know what I mean? Like that 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 would have been the game right there. That would have been uh, crazy, We had beepers. Man. We had beepers. I know that that's time. right. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> hey, um, one thing that's huge. That one thing that was huge back then in the '90s was summer leagues, man. Um, all mm -hmm. across, the, you know, so, you know, AAU was was like was what it, you know was what it was. But you had to be the cream of the crop to get invited somewhere to do all that kind of stuff. So everybody wasn't doing that, like you know, the invitationals and that. Summer leagues was where it's, you know where where it was at. Give me a few of your um summer league memories, you know, you know, in, in uh, North Carolina or just any you know, summer league stuff, man. No, nah, man, that was the uh, that was the realest, man. I think it was like when I first moved up to. To went to North Carolina, you know, mm -hmm. the summer before my year. Donald Williams had a team, one of my best friends to the day, uh, a guy named Gerald Richardson. He had a mm -hmm. barbershop called Superior Style in Raleigh. Mm -hmm. He sponsored a team over in the Chavis League over at St. Augs, mm -hmm. St. Augustine. Oh, St. Augs, no doubt. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that was the – man, everybody played in that. Rodney Monroe, you know, Corciani. Mm -hmm. um, that was the first time I played against, you know, uh, Gugliotta. You know what I'm saying? Mm, those, I mean, no like, doubt. Like, like, so imagine that. Like, those was like one couple, one of the first two, one or two games that we played. Um, and I'm like coming into high school and I like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I have, you know, I have a really good game. So I, mean, mm -hmm. I think having the success that I did in those games against the, those caliber players, you know, mm -hmm. let me know definitely that I was ready for college. But yeah. you know, these guys were, you know, they were on the precipice of going into the league. So exactly. I felt like, man, like I said, yeah. if, I could, if I'm having this success against them, then maybe I'm, mm -hmm. you know. No doubt. Not, you know, almost ready to, to, to take that step as well. Even though I didn't even really think about it like that, man. Yeah. I didn't really think of, like, the, Michael Jordan was the gold standard for me. Going to North mm -hmm. Carolina and kind of his, you know, his path, you know, how he was in college for three years. So I felt like there's no way that I would not go to college at least three years, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But and then it just kind of worked out to where, um, you know, after my sophomore year, I was, you know, talked about as possibly the number one pick in the draft, you know, mm -hmm. wind up going number three. Mm -hmm. But I think that was um, uh, it started up those summer leagues, you know, with all those guys, Rodney Rogers, everybody, all those guys from. Um, from the area schools, you know, NC State. I mean, like they had a bunch of their team, you know, Duke guys. They mixed in with kind of the central guys. They had a mm -hmm. team, you know, mm -hmm. Carolina, a few Carolina, because we you could only have, I think, two players from each team, maybe three okay. or something like that was the rule. So, gotcha. like, like, you know, Brian Reese and Derek Phelps, they, you know, like, those guys played on other teams because we yeah. didn't have our, our whole team together. Gotcha. But, man, it was. That's dope, uh -huh. man. And then Good I job. did the same thing. I started the summer league, you know, once I once I was in the league over in, mm -hmm. at North Carolina Central. 
Um, call it North Carolina Pro Am, and it, mm -hmm. man, it kind of took on a life of its own, man. So yeah, it was, I can only imagine. Did you, did you, um, regarding summer league, did you make it up? And did y'all play a, a, a affiliate in the Sunny Hill League at all? Did y'all make it up? up man, up I, I, I never there, really no. played in the Sunny Hill League. Okay, you know, I, mean, I think I may have came to maybe a game or two again because okay. I, I was like I was finishing school. It was okay. like this, but like when I kid because I left school early. Uh, and, oh yeah, I mean, got you, got you. Okay. Yeah, so I was like, when I and you know, we weren't really making the playoffs, so when I yeah. was, you know, school, I was going back trying to finish and get all yeah. my credits. Get your I mean, credits up. Got you. That's something all that right. I told, promised my mom and Coach Smith that I yeah. was going to do, and I'm so glad I did it because if yeah. I, you know, if I wouldn't have went back and sacrificed that that time and those summers, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able yeah. to be here right now. You know, no so doubt. You can't, can't, no doubt. A lot of guys who have the the knowledge and the, the understanding that could really help kids at this level. They could they couldn't can't do it because they don't have a degree to be able mm -hmm. to, to 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 you know even get hired. So I mean, like so, those are things that I'm really thankful that I, I sacrificed to to do. No doubt. Um, what about um? T tell me about those. Um, another thing that was huge back then was like the camps. You know, Nike camp, Adidas. Yeah. Um, you know, um, you know, ABCD, all that kind of stuff. Tell t tell me a few of your uh, you know, camp, you know, most memorable camp experiences, man, and you know, players you was in camp with. Yeah, I mean, again, I was the same, those same guys, you know, she, um, Jeff McGinnis, uh, Jeff Capel, I mean, guys across the country, Dontonio Wingfield, I mean, the different names of, uh, and then, like, the counselors uh, at that time at Nike camp was, like, Juwan Howard and Grant yeah. Hill and, yeah. you know, guys that have, you know, been in college for a year or two that we've, you know, been watching. Those were the guys mm -hmm. that were coming back working camps with being able to, you know, you know, hobnob and get to know those guys a little mm -hmm. bit was it was really cool. You know, you you know, like I said, it's like nah, man, these these dudes. It really made you feel like it was that moment. And then, okay, I mean, even though these guys, we kind of put them up here now. Nah, mm -hmm. Like they, you know, once we getting out here and we working now, nah, you you got to guard me too. That's right. <laughs> so, so I think that was um, that was huge. We, we like all those little prep stars in North Carolina they had the camp prep stars. I went up to Pitt uh five star. Five star uh, yep, three yep. up in um up in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Um you know, Garfinkel and those guys, man, mm -hmm. that's really Michael Mike Lord, I remember first time he came up Mike Lord that played at um where did he go? Did he go to UMass. Uh so I think th th those guys from Baltimore, a lot of those guys, man, I was you know, just, you know, seeing people from across the country, it just, you know, gave you that much confidence that no matter where I went, you know, I was, you know, I was bringing back the MVP trophy. So I know that's <laughs> right. Yeah. So I was like, you know, I I'm know a sophomore, right. you know, yeah. so it's like, man, I'm going in there and I'm, you know, coming back home, you know, with, with these trophies, it's like, okay, no, nah, not, not only was I'm doing it in Kinston, you know what I'm uh -huh. saying, doing it in North Carolina, you know, I'm trying, I went up to New York, I played with Riverside Church. Uh -huh. uh, we we took a um, you know took a tour over to to France. So man, basketball mm -hmm. it took you know took me a, a, some far away places early on. I mean, yeah, early on, yeah. Still, still in high school, playing with you know Jermaine Sunshine Smith, um, Selden Jefferson, you mm -hmm. know a bunch of names. New York, New York, because I was like, I mean, I used to go up to New York. You know, uh, Mr. Lord, you know, get us up there, stay up there, playing golden hoops. Mm -hmm. You know, all those turn them up tournaments in New York. So it was like, man, I, I traveled with mine. You know, I know that's I, right. I, I wanted to, to prove not only where I was, but I wanted to prove across the country that I was, mm -hmm. I was, you know, I was the best. So I mean, I think by no the doubt. time I was in, you know, a senior in high school, I was right where I wanted to. You know, different publications had between myself, Sheed, and and, and Randy Livingston as the you know top three players in the country. So so I felt no like doubt. I, you know, Re did what I was supposed to. Yeah, regarding the um the Nike camp, I'm sure I'm I'm not sure if you said um I sent you that link. Um I have found that footage. Shout out to my man Pete yeah. Lisicki, my man Pete Lisicki, who was also at the Nike camp. Um uh the 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 you was in a dunk contest uh at the Nike camp against she man. Talk about it. You went you went from the foul line, dog. Yeah, man. It was like again, it's like I look at that that footage now, man, like man, that was, that, I can't I don't know. Where I know when I sent you that, you was like, yo, where you get that from? That's exclusive. <laughs> right, right. I, cause I mean I see I think it was another contest that I was in that they show a lot, but I never really see the one with Sheed. I mean, because she had some hell of a dunks, man. It's she had like some that. dunks. She, Rashid had some nice dunks in that joint for no. his size. Like, he was, he was, you know what I mean? Yeah, was, that was good. Yeah, but no, <laughs> it's, just, it's cool, man. Just like, again, that camaraderie that we had with guys. I mean, it's the top players in the country mm -hmm. um, coming together again. Just to, it's a, it was proving grounds for me, man. No it, doubt. It was all 
business, like that, that business, game, yeah. McDonald's game and all mm -hmm. of that. Like I said, I mean, I, like, you know, like you don't get one chance. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was focused. Yeah, I enjoyed the festivities. I enjoyed this thing that they had for us. But my focus mm -hmm. was that game. Was the ball. Yeah. And, and you I'm know, and, and, and those camps, especially for, um, you know, players who may have come from small towns and stuff like that. You know, this was before it, there was no ESPN, you know, top 100. You know what I'm saying? All yeah. that kind of stuff. When you go, when you went to those camps, when, that's when the writers, they wrote about you. And that's when you got your rankings. And you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's when the, you know, the kind of stuff popped off. So you had to show out. It had to be all business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, it's like those, I mean, local, I mean, like in North Carolina, like Bob Gibbons was, a, you know, one of the first guys that kind of like, he, he was like a legend in the game and, and mm -hmm. you know, you know, recruiting. And he was like, I, I remember one of the first things I read in like a Streets the Smiths uh, or Blue Ribbon was like, uh, he's a left-handed Rodney Rogers. So no I, doubt. I, I, mean, no, I was a right-handed Rodney Rogers. So yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. So that, that was your assessment, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, really now, think about it. So, <laughs> and so that just shows that they look at uh -huh. me as kind of like a, a back-to-the-basket kind of a yeah. power guy that could, gotcha. you know, that could could bounce <laughs> off the floor a little bit. But, man, uh -huh. it was – but nah, it was it was it was good times, man. Just trying to um, you know go to go to those camps, but again, like McDonald's and all that stuff. Like man, I was like Michael Jordan. Like Michael Jordan had thirty. I got, I need to try to get thirty. I mean, so I tell, get... tell me about that transition. Tell tell me about the tell me about the uh, McDonald's All American game when you came away with the MVP. You was MVP in the McDonald's All American game, right? Yeah, yeah, man. Again, it's just like this plan, just competing, man. Because it was like you know the East versus West, so it just became a pride thing, you know, mm -hmm. and then, like. You know, we would have the little practices and whatnot, and we were going back and forth. But it was like when the real game came on, it was like, man, yeah, I, you know, I was focused. <laughs> yeah. I didn't quite, I didn't quite get to thirty, to Mike, but I had twenty eight. So yeah, for sure, for <laughs> sure. What, what, what was your performance? You know, I'm sure people can watch it on them. Um, they they can find it on YouTube. You know, uh, the the game mm. that you played. And what year was that? In case we want to look. It yeah, it's nineteen. I'm in ninety three. Ninety three. Oh man, classic. Yeah. Who at first? Who were some of the players that was in the game with you that you remember? And then what was your performance? What you do in the game? To get the MVP, uh, uh, I guess uh, Jock Vaughn. You know, mm -hmm. he was actually uh, co MVP. You know, for, okay. the, for the West team. You know, what I'm saying he had a bunch of dimes. We wound up winning the game, but uh, mm -hmm. Rasheed, uh, Rasheed got two texts and got kicked out <laughs> of, of the McDonald's game. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. I didn't realize yeah. that. Wow. Yeah. So it was like, uh, um, uh, D'Antonio Wingfield, um, uh, man, a bunch of darn. I had had a bunch of bigs and and you know on that team. But no, nah, again, like I said, I just got after man. I was able to hit. You know, got the outside shot going. Got to the basket. You know, finished some some big dunks around the rim. Mm -hmm. Couple and ones, mm -hmm. yeah. So I wound up finishing with like like twenty eight and, and mm -hmm. quite a few rebounds and walked away with with, with some hardwood, man. Something no that doubt. I'm so super proud of. No doubt. So transitioning, um, talk, talking about the um, so two part question. Um, tell me about the college recruiting process and what ultimately led you to North Carolina. Um, and you talked about Georgetown, all that kind of stuff earlier. And then, um, did did like like. We're, and then, I guess, second part of the question, was there any kind of, you know, behind-the-scenes conversations, like, with you and she, like, yo, you know what I mean, you need, you need come to North Carolina, you know, play with me, or, like, were y'all already committed at the time of the uh, McDonald's game, or no? No, I mean, like, I committed er early, but she, I mean, I got, um, because I went to, on a visit, man, I had a really good visit to Virginia, like, so I went okay. to, you know, I took a visit to UVA, okay. and I went up there, man, and, like, you know, I just didn't, I didn't, they didn't really know. I mean, they were recruiting me, and I was like, I was going to take a visit to Charlottesville and went up there and saw, you know, all them light-skinned sisters, boy, you know, from, you know, <laughs> that, that made that trick down from Northern Virginia. Like, no doubt. Oh, hey, you know <laughs> no doubt. Saying? You be, hey, all right. You no doubt. <laughs> uh, I came on a weekend. I remember um, uh, Guru uh, was, was do doing a concert there. Oh, the gang Gangstar. 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 Gangstar was there, man. So it was like, man, it was a great vibe. Good vibe, um, yeah. yeah. Brian Stiff was, you know, he was a senior. He was leaving, so it was a good opportunity to come in, play Cornell Parker, Junior Burroughs, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Corey Alexander. They were guys that would have still been there. They went to Oak Hill. Mm -hmm. um, so, man, like, it, that was, like, I really liked that visit. And then, yeah. so, but I took that visit, and then I went to North Carolina. You know, mm -hmm. and, then, and then I sat in there with, with, with Dean Smith and, you know, like all these other places was promising everything. And, you know, and it was just like he was like, 
it wasn't wasn't one that was promising. Like you know, I, you know, I've been coaching, and you know, I'm, I'm gonna play the best players. You know, uh -huh. so I, you know, because I was hearing a lot of people that was recruiting against him was like, man, he, you know, he's the only one that held Michael Jordan down and all this. Yeah, kind of yeah. Like, Michael Jordan is Michael Jordan. I mean, I think he, you know, he credits, you know, Dean Smith for helping him get there to, to exactly. be who he was, giving him the ability to go and score 35, even though he didn't do it in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So I just think that, you know, just being me, I, I like the fact that he wasn't promising me anything. And I knew gotcha. that I, could, you know, I had to come and earn it. And mm -hmm. on top of the fact, like, man, I, that with the fact that I, I wanted to come back home too. Mm -hmm. like, like I went to Virginia, you know, to Oak Hill that year. Um, you know, my mom and you know, dad, they were able, I mean, they probably saw me play five or six times that year, you know, and okay. I wanted to get back to where they could yeah. pretty much come to, to all of our home games. And, and gotcha. they went to a lot of our road games too. Because, okay. You know, we were right there in that ACC cluster. Yeah. Um, so I think that was, you know, that, that was the biggest thing for me, man, being able to, to learn from, from the best, you know, you know, be close to home, represent my home state. Mm -hmm. um, that that play, yeah. I mean, I like I had some some schools that were, you know, offering some crazy stuff, you know, and I yeah. mean, and it, it literally scared me, man. Yeah. I, mean, I just felt like you know, you know that you know, I didn't want to do anything to to jeopardize, jeopardize my chance yeah. of being able to go. I mean, I mean, I felt like if I keep progressing and keep training the way that I was, you know, mm -hmm. was going. That I was gonna have an opportunity. Yeah, to, you was gonna be good regardless. Yeah, I was gonna be good. So another fifty, sixty thousand dollars. You know, what I'm saying that it's not, it's not worth it. Not worth it. Nope, nope. I'm for just sure. scared the hell out of me, bro. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I know sorry. that's right. <laughs> well, you come from, you had it. I mean, that's that good foundation. You know, what I'm saying you had a good foundation. Those morals, and values, your faith. You know, what I'm saying. I'm sure. You know, the spirit was speaking to you like, hey, you know, something, something ain't feeling right. You know what I'm saying? Nah, nah. Yeah. And my brother, like I said, like, again, yeah, my older brother that was saying that he played at Florida State. He, you know, he finished in 89. Uh, he, you know, had a, you know, was in the, had a couple stints with, with Sacramento and Boston, mm -hmm. but he played mostly overseas. He was doing well. So, you know, when he was overseas, I had his truck. So I was riding yeah. a blazer and stuff yeah. when I was in high school and college. Yeah. So I, I had what good. I needed. You was you good. Yeah. So, so I mean, I was just. I'm glad I did it. I mean, it's like I can, you know, really have a conscience to know that man, you can do it the right way and still have success. And I know no that. And that's the same. Oh, the audio moved out a little bit. I'm sorry about that. All right, you All right. good? Okay. Hey, so question. So, so, um, so we're at North Carolina. Um, tell me what it was like. Um. All right, take me back through that day, the day of your first game, if you can recall, you know, all those years ago, um, you know, before coming out the tunnel the first time, you know, your freshman season. But what was it like that first day, man? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, did you have class that day? Was, was you nervous? And, and, then, and then game time that night coming out the tunnel, first home game. Yeah, I mean, I think we had class. And then it was like, you know, we have a team dinner uh that we we have and you know i think probably about two or three o'clock you know it's just a, at a place called slugs it's not there anymore mm -hmm. um but we had like a pre you know pre-meal whether you had steak or chicken and the pasta i could see that you know i could see that meal right now still <laughs> we had it, you know every time um but it's just you no know, it, was, it was first class man i mean mm -hmm. I think that's the thing what i got about you know coach smith he did everything first class Gotcha. You know, even when we went on the road, we stayed at the nicest hotels. We, you know, we ate. You know, he made he took us to dinner at uh, at the best restaurants in the city. Mm -hmm. You know, just exposing us to 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 culture. You know, what I'm saying gotcha. of, of what we're you know of what we're going. I mean, and just how he dressed and and how he mm -hmm. approached things. Even you know on a regular day in the office when we didn't have a game, you know, coach would have on a, a, a you know a shirt and tie. You know, yeah, in the office, right? Uh -huh, like I said, he, uh -huh. you know, he would put on his his pants and maybe a collar shirt for practice. But when he was in the office, if I had a meeting with him in the office, I mean, he was in shirt and tie. Gotcha. So I mean, just you know, so I, I had a lot of respect for the for for the profession, and you know, and the, you know, and like the guys that I looked up to, like you know, MJ and and, and Worthy, and you know, seeing those guys, man, those guys were always suited and booted. Yeah, so it was for like, sure. Yeah, you know, so even though like when that. You know, kind of culture changed a little bit when everybody mm -hmm. wanted to, you know, start wearing, you know, jeans and baggy, and yeah. baggy mm -hmm. stuff and all that. I, I didn't change. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I, I felt like, man, I earned the right to, to put on this suit. I'm, I'm going to put on this suit. You know, gotcha. so I think those those are things that, that I got from him, you know, that 
that I cherish. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I you know, make sure our guys that aren't aren't playing that they they got on the jacket and or when we travel. Yeah, you know, we and again, you know, we all wear sweat sometimes, mm -hmm. but but I, that was like everybody that comes here, man. First thing I, we do, we get them a suit. I know that's right. <laughs> yeah, like you teach know, teach them how to tie that tie. Yeah, <laughs> teach them how to tie that tie, man. Pick out, you know. Uh, you know, fabric, go through these swatches. You know, we, we're going to put you in a suit and make sure that you, you look nice and be able to represent your, yourself. I mean, that was that's the thing, thing that we, we do. And uh, I just... Manhood, uh, man. That's, that's yeah. a powerful thing, man. That's it, man. Manhood. Sure. Or te teaching these young guys how to how to, how to to go about it. Being, like I said, no, there's nothing wrong with, uh -huh. um, you know, with the, with the baggy pants. Like I said, I got some of them, too. I live for the culture. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's not not who I wanted to be and not who I wanted to portray as a professional. Like, even no now, you know, a lot of the coaches are wearing, like, you know, polos. You know, I ain't wearing no polo, man. I ain't get to this spot, you know, <laughs> for the people to help me get here to wear no polo. I know I'm that's gonna, right. I'm going to put on that three-piece. You know I can dig so, it. It'd be, it'd be clean. When they, back in the day, stay cleaner than the Board of Health. <laughs> hey, man, that's, that's what we do. Boy, like my mom said, boy, you shop. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. Hey, take me through that first night coming out the tunnel, man. I no, mean, nah, man, it's just like you know. The, I was. I, I don't think I was nervous or anything. Okay. Again, like so, like I've, I've been playing. Like I've been practicing against the national champions, right? Yeah. You know, and, and the truth be told, man, like said, if I'd have committed later, I probably mm -hmm. wouldn't even have went to North Carolina. Okay, really, with everything that happened because they had won the championship. A lot of yeah. my wanting to go to North Carolina was they they hadn't won a championship since. Like eighty five when Michael was there, gotcha. Right, so I was coming in feeling like I was going to help them get over the hump, and I then understand. that spring they win the championship. Yeah, yeah, so gotcha, it was like, gotcha. So, so that created some friction within itself. Like I said, uh -huh. we got you know all these hot shot freshmen coming in. You know myself, she, you know uh, uh, Jeff McInnes, and now we you know lumped in against uh, against the, the national champions, mm -hmm. and we you know what I'm saying we getting at them. Yeah, you know, and every day, you know, what I'm yeah, saying? And, and to the point to where it became like a little, you know, just a little conflict about how how, how it's gonna balance out, you know, uh huh, was, uh huh, you know. I mean, even though I was going to, co I was going to Coach Smith office, you know, what I'm saying like, yo, man, I, like I feel like I need to be playing more. Yeah, you know, yeah right. Like, yeah. So, I mean, that's uh, crazy. It sounds crazy <laughs> to me now. And I'm going to the, the legend. The, the, my on Say, here. listen, uh, coach, step into my office. Yeah, yeah. I mean, are you are you not seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> <laughs> and, and he told me something, man. And it, like that, he's like, man, you and, and it just shows the you know the, the immaturity of an 18 year old. Like, uh -huh. said, like he told me, like I, you know, I feel like I mean, you and Brian Reese need to try to be the best you know, small forward that you can in the country together. Mm -hmm. I feel, and then I, and before he could get it out good, my crazy self does say, I feel like I could be the best small forward in the country by myself. Oh, you know what I'm wow. saying? So, <laughs> so I know, I know he's probably like, this kid is crazy. Uh, <laughs> but again, but, but I, but now, you know, you see it, but again, it, it's just because I'm seeing like other guys, um, Joe Smith, you know, getting freshman of the week. So now mm -hmm. it's like, you know, some of the things that these other coaches that were, was telling me that was recruiting against North Carolina felt like yeah. they kind of coming into fruition. Fruition, yeah. Yeah, so, um, but no, but things turned, you know, as as the year went on. That, that first game, was, you know, it was up and down. I think I might have missed it. Uh, I went up and dunked, threw it off the back of the rim, and uh, so I got pulled. That was like, that's the thing. You missed a dunk, you get pulled out the game. Coach put me right back in. Yeah. But it was just like <laughs> just hype. I was I was fast. I go back and watch those games, man. I was just like a blur up and down the <laughs> court. It was it was yeah. a thing. Um, you know, we used to have these offensive and defensive thoughts of the day, and it was like sprint the offense. Mm -hmm. And then Phil Ford told me like, you sprint the offense and you offensive rebound. Coach is gonna play you because he uh -huh. loves getting extra possession. So gotcha. that's all I had in my mind, man. Mm -hmm. I wasn't nobody. <clears throat> In on the team, nobody in college basketball is going to stop me from getting to the offensive boards. No doubt. So, so, so I think that was the mentality that I approached. So that that allowed me to, you know, again, like I said, I'm playing like I'm averaging like twelve or thirteen in in eighteen minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm you know, but I'm sharing time with 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 Brian Reese. He was 
Uh, and I think toward the ACC tournament, things started to turn a little bit. That's because I was like, man, I was I was leaving, bro. I mean, like, so yeah. I, I was, in my mind, like this 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 ain't the place for me. You know, what yeah. I'm saying I had this big conversation with my mom, like like like, yo, this this ain't this ain't it, you know? And yeah, she, yeah. Man, and it was it was a real turning moment, man, um, because she <clears throat> she let she heard me out. She okay. heard me out. It was, I remember it after the game, like, well, I'm just saying, you know, this ain't me. You know what I'm saying? I, I know I should be playing more. I should be doing mm -hmm. this. And she just sat there and let me rant. Yeah. <laughs> she told me something, man. She's like, well, I'll tell you this. You know what I'm saying? If you start running now, you're going to be running the rest of your life. Wow. And, man, wow. that just. It's wisdom I'm, right I'm, there. I, I, from, from that point, I was just like, yo, well, I ain't no quitter. I ain't no runner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just sucked it up, man. A week later, uh, two weeks later, man, we in the ACC tournament. I'm the most valuable player in the ACC tournament. <laughs> so, you mom, know. mom Deuce, no, mom Deuce, man. man. Don't you mom dare Deuce. challenge it, Mom Deuce. But nah, she heard nah. you. She heard you out, though. She heard yeah. you out. Heard you me meant, out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and then gave me that real to real. You know That's right. Like, you That's know, right. She, she's like, and, and it's so crazy, man. That like, you know, adults, you know, they, they just know so know so much and see so much further. She knew yep. what he was preparing me for. He was pre preparing mm -hmm. me for, you know, ups and downs of you know the pro life. You know, uh -huh. you know things happen or whatnot. You still, you just gotta weather the storm and keep keep battling. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I, if I did, you know, first little. Uh, adversity that I would have ran to it, you know, through it in, in Philadelphia, you know, yeah. getting traded to Detroit or, or uh -huh. all those things. Like, am I just going to quit? You know, no. You know what I'm yep. saying? It, that, that was motivation. That's so right. Like, okay, now I think everybody should get traded because now it's, it's like a wake up call. <laughs> exactly. Like, now, like, yo, you know, it, all right, but, but I was determined that, man, I know this is. This is this is for me. You know that wasn't the, it wasn't the best situation there in, uh -huh. in Philly. I mean, I felt <laughs> like going to Philly. Uh, it was all everything was kind of you know pictured around me when I got drafted there in '95. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, I had no understanding that they were selling the team. Yeah, you know, wow. that they were like um, was trying to cut cost in every way. Man, I played mm -hmm. with like 30 players my my rookie year. Wow, like, that's crazy. Just to, you know, John Lucas was the coach. He was like everybody that was, you know, that he had in his drug program. You know what I'm saying? He brought, he gave him a 10-day. I mean, much love to John for, you know, trying to look out for those guys. But that wasn't conducive for me mm. coming into a situation trying to, to trying to grow as a basketball player. Yeah, so, that's crazy. And then hey, um, the next wait, 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 real quick before we before we talk about the NBA, I want to um, mention one or two more things real quick, and then we're going to talk about draft okay. and then, then then pick up right right. Just hold that train of thought real quick. Um, what's like just just any any what's one of your most memorable experiences at North Carolina? Um, um, just anything you remember, just one of your most something that sticks out to you that you'll never forget. Well, I mean, I think the, the ACC uh, tournament. You okay, know you know there, um, you know. Winning the ACC tournament that that fresh my, my freshman year, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we get scoring the winning basket against, Ooh, nice. you know, against Wake Forest. Uh -huh. um, you know, again naming you know most outstanding player, mm -hmm. and then um, you know probably two games later having one of the biggest letdowns. You know, saying mm -hmm. we were this team that was favored to to win it all, and uh, you know we get you know beat by Boston College. Mm -hmm. and, you know, Bill Curley and you know Howard Isley. You know, they, you know, they made every shot, you know, made wow. every play. And, um, you know, I remember that I mean, because it was like, uh, you know, when it was time to kind of sit in front of the media. Yeah. Know, coach. That's you know, hard. Had a, you know, coach had me, you know, saying, all right, you want to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you wanted this. So now yeah. you know, get on this side. All the seniors, yeah. they were able to just go ahead and not, not be in the press conference. <laughs> had me and Donald Williams sitting up there. But it was, it was great motivation, man. We were able to, to parlay that into a Final Four run the next year. Yeah. Um, you know, so, I mean, I, I think I had I had a lot of, you know, close finishes, man. I think mm -hmm. that kind of did kind of summed up uh, my high school and college, you know. Yeah, career. close finishes. Like, yeah, yeah, close finishes. I lost in the hey. state championship, you know. Again, watched that game from the sidelines. And then, you know, the first play of uh, the Final Four, I get a knee to the thigh. Mm. You know, Coyce Williams, and I get a knee to the thigh. I mean, I still, you know, mustered up, you know, 18 and 8, you know, in, in, in that game. But I just wasn't myself. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? And we wind up you – know, we, I think we, we still wind up losing the game. I think that was, uh, you know, 
Calabria, uh, Dante Calabria. Dante Calabria, yeah. Yeah, he had led the, had led the nation in scoring that year. Mm -hmm. And I think he had, like, went for, like, one for ten, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, from three. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, man, it's just like it wasn't in the cards. I mean, yeah. it's felt like that, you know, that happened. And I, mean, I know we're going to talk about the pros later on. Yep. And even when I got <clears> out it, you know, uh, NBA championship, we go up, you know, 2-0 against Miami. Um, you know, and again, just close finishes. They wind close up finishes, coming back yeah. uh, and, and beating us there. Uh, you know, a lot, lot yeah. of Hey, talk, talk, one thing last before we uh, transition. Tell me about that that dunk, man. Talk, 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 talk about the dunk, man, against Duke, man. When you came reverse under the rim, man. Talk about that, Joe, man. And, and, then, and then the most legendary strut after the dunk, the – I mean, no. talk about, you got to talk about the dunk, and then you got to talk about the walk off. The walk off was legendary. Again, man, it's like one of those things. Like if you asked me to, to probably go and do that dunk, it, it was just one of those in you know in front in the moment, right? Yeah, like you got you playing, and you know I go to the basket, I get the ball on the wing. Uh, Jeff McGinnis with the hit ahead. Yeah, you know, and I, that's, that's, what, that's what you want to teach kids, man. Right now, hit ahead. Stop dribbling yes. the ball. Uh -huh. yeah, I don't even think he. I don't even think he put it down. He caught uh -huh. the ball, hit ahead. I was yep. able to get get ahead, um, you know. And then I just took off, man. I got there. I, I jumped. The next thing I know, I got a bump, and then I yeah. was on the side of the rim and threw it down. So <laughs> yeah. and, and it's in camera. You know, I said, you know, they all on top of you. Um, it's a, it's a huge game. We've been thinking about that game all all week. And um, and I have a, a one of one of those type of plays, man. And you know, like I said, that that was a little bit of out. You know, out of character for me to kind of okay. do all that. I always like Coach Smith. <laughs> you know, his main one of his one of his main uh, thoughts of the day was you know saying was you know act like you've been there before. Right? I understand. You know yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, so I never did that, man. I, I never really showed any emotion. That was probably the most emotion that I showed. The, oh, so like the the afterwards, like the the, yeah. the the with the and then the walk off. The yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. We ready now, you know. So, <laughs> so I mean, was that that, that walk that off like that that kind of bop that strut? <laughs> is that the first time you had pulled that strut out, or that you you did that once before in the past? I don't so, think I have pulled it out moment. before or since. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that was one of a kind, and it was left right kind. back there. <laughs> one of a kind, man. Like that this. strut was legendary, man. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. So I was like, yeah, bouncing, like, yeah, like, yeah, we here, man. Like, yeah. I, again, I never did that again. I probably couldn't even mimic it right now if I wanted to. <laughs> that, was, that was pure adrenaline and yes. emotion and hype from that game, man. Yes, it, yes. It, so it's, I know that's right. Hey, take take us through um, draft night. It's NBA draft night. Um, tell me where you were. Tell me what it was like, you know what I mean, hearing your name called and all that. Yeah, it, it was a little different, man, because our draft night was um, – it was when they, you know, first added the expansion team. Added to oh, okay. They added Vancouver. So okay. the, the draft was actually in Toronto. Okay. So, so it wasn't in New York the way it, you know, had yeah. customary been. So it uh -huh. kind of took a little bit of the luster away from it because you okay. know, you're always, I mean, it was still great to walk up and shake David Stern's hand, you know, mm -hmm. and be a part of that, you know, the whole draft, you know, change, you know, change your life. Mm -hmm. But um, but now nah, it was it was a little bit a little different, you know, Canada that that, that whole vibe. But I, yeah. I was excited, man. I knew. I mean, I had great workouts. I mean, Golden State had the, you know, the number one pick, and I felt like that was actually my best workout. You know, I, okay. went, I, I shot the ball extremely well, um, you know, had good conversations. But, again, it just shows you the relationships. I mean, I think Dave Twarzik at the time was like their general manager, and he had some, you know, connections back to the Tidewater area with Joe Smith. So, mm -hmm. you know, he wound up with going number one. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody really wanted to go to the Clippers. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So it was like, uh, and uh, you were, uh, but I did have a really good workout there too. You know, me and mm -hmm. she worked out there together. Okay. Um, and so I thought, like, man, I, I bet you I'm going to the Clippers. And then they said, the <laughs> dice. Uh, and I was dice. like, and I was like, cool. And then I knew it was Philadelphia. I pretty much knew that, uh, you know, John Lucas from my workouts and stuff that told me that if I was there at three, they were going to take they me. They was going to get you, got you. Yeah. So you know, in either one of those, uh, I think Washington uh, and – and I didn't work out for any teams after Minnesota because uh, mm -hmm. Coach Smith, again, he had great relationships with all those guys. He called mm -hmm. Kevin McHale and, um, you know, we tried to set up, you know, a workout. And he's like, 
uh, coach, he doesn't even have to come. I've seen enough. Like, is that, gotcha. if he, if, yeah. if he's available there at five. Yeah, we already seen. We need to see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. All right, so, I, so I only, I only really worked out for uh, four teams. I worked out okay. for uh, Golden State, uh, the Clippers, uh, Philadelphia, and Washington. Gotcha. So take us through um, your, your NBA experience. Um, I, I have I, I can recall a lot. You know, I remember, you know, me being from the Philly area, you know, watching with the Sixers and you know, the Pistons and all that kind of stuff. But just take us through your NBA experience, man. Um, you know, uh, memorable experiences, memorable games, you know, players you played against, some of the toughest players you played against, you know, any way you want to break it down. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess starting up in Philadelphia was – uh, just to, it was it was tough, man. Again, like I said, not running because I I had I'm coming from winning cultures. Like I, said, yeah. I didn't know any better. Like I was like I really came home and hung my head every day. Mm -hmm. Like I said, wow. I, I didn't want I didn't want to go out, you know. Yeah. I didn't want to go to the clubs. Like you know, guys are still having fun. You know, like man, how can you really go and show your face right now? We just lost. Yeah. You know what I'm I took every loss home. I was you know so and and like I was battling like plantar fasciitis you know, that, mm -hmm. you know that first you know first year but i wanted to play so bad that i was uh you know i you know i just played through it like i mean mm -hmm. the trailer, the pain, i didn't really feel any pain but then when i get home at night and the first thing in the morning i couldn't even hardly touch the floor with my heel mm -hmm. you know so and i had to you know go and get therapy still try to get practice and stuff so it was a it was a pretty uh tough challenge that 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 first year in um in philadelphia then you know Allen. They drafted Allen the next you know, next year, and mm -hmm. I mean our games didn't complement each other. You know, what I'm saying gotcha. we were both scoring, you know, scoring guys, guys that needed the ball. Yeah, um, and I think you know, I mean, I, I think the ideal situation for me would have been you know Mar Mar Marbury. You know, what I'm saying? okay, you were more, like like more, to more complement your game and your style. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. Yep. yeah. So I think you know it became pretty evident. You know, we were still getting twenty apiece. You know, mm -hmm. but it wasn't producing any wins. So I think mm -hmm. you know it ultimately came down to the decision that uh, you know one of us was going to have to leave to try to get some more pieces in to to surround mm -hmm. one or the other. And gotcha. uh, you know, so I was you know went to to Detroit. They were able to get Ratliff and some nice pieces to compliment them, and I was able to go and you know play with a you know really a pass first you know forward you know in mm -hmm. Grand Hill. So yep. really, you know expanding my game and you know both you know and I was able to become an All Star you know mm -hmm. there you know in Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, you know just you know and then when Grant left you know I you know, probably had my best year statistically you know because I was you know. I had to carry so much of the scoring load with that team mm -hmm. lined up, you know, averaging almost, you know, 30 that, that year, mm -hmm. um, you know, still, I, cause I still feel like I'm, you know, it's not really my game. I'm still should be, you know, probably more than 20, 23, 24 points a uh -huh. game and, mm -hmm. you know, five and six assists on, on mm -hmm. a team that, that had more balance. Yeah. So yep. It was kind of an aberration type, type year for us, but it still felt good and know mm -hmm. that, that I could, um, um, could put up those type of numbers against mm -hmm. the, the best in the world, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so I think that was, um, you, know, you know, from there, just the, you know, the maturation, being able to play with uh, older players, I think uh -huh. that, was, that was a really turning point for me, man, mm -hmm. learning how to win. So many yeah. young guys come in the league, understand that you got to learn, no matter where, you, if you won in high school or win in college, winning in the NBA is different, and you have to learn how to do so. And, yeah. and the only way you learn to do that is being around other players that have learned. When I got around the Joe Dumars, the Grant Longs, the Rick Mahorns, mm -hmm. you know, those guys, you know, were were like professionals and, and guys that, that, that taught me a lot and, mm -hmm. and really helped the next, you know, 10 to, you know, 10 to 12 years of my career, you know, mm -hmm. or, 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 or 10 to 14 years of my career, yep. you know, getting there and being able to, to see how they went about their business um, so it was, you know, the, and then from there, uh, we had some, some good years in Detroit, probably, had, you know, probably five seasons there. I was traded to Washington. Um, that was probably one of the, the, the low moments of my, my life, you know, it, you know, at that time, you know, I felt like we had started to build something there in, in Detroit and, um, uh, and then, uh, they traded me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like, I'm sitting on the damn uh bed with a groin man i tore, tore my groin you know mm. so talking to joe dumars and you know, you know he's like man we, we got to get you back you the only franchise guy we you know we got you know what i'm saying then this fool traded me that, that summer man so mm. I, you know it's a cold business but yeah. at the same time you had, had to pick yourself up you know washington mm -hmm. 
you know, I, you know, I had worked my way up to again, like, you know, that, that progress of, you know, finally making the playoffs to, you know, we make it to the second round and feel mm -hmm. like we're about to take that next step. And now I get traded to a team and they're talking about making the playoffs again. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, my God, where, where am I? And then, um, you know, and then that was that then, but, I, but it was like, I was some bittersweet because it was like I was going to play with MJ. Right, yeah, so it was like, yeah. so it was like I know he wanted me on on that team. Right, I just mm -hmm. competed against them, you know, and was you know having my way against them the year before. So, uh -huh. so he and he was in win now mode. He's like, I'm yeah. going to this the last year, you know, I'm I'm not going to get it done with this crew. I'm gonna bring in some some more. So I, I'm thinking that, um, okay, all right, like so he we want me to, to kind of take the because I had been this leader of, mm -hmm. of the Detroit Pistons that was you know, beating his, te you know, teams in Washington that he was on uh -huh. the year before. So I didn't, I didn't think that he was coming there wanting me to be more of a compliment to, to him. You know, I uh -huh. thought that ever, he was kind of passing the torch for me to, to take on. But, you yeah, know, sure. it, was, it was really, I like to say, it wasn't like a, a friction, but I think, you know, more between us. I mean, we had great times away from the, the game and, and whatnot, but our games just didn't compliment each other. Gotcha. And, and I think when it came down to it, um, you, you know, it's just you know, it was it was best that you know people people you know, people saw it. I mean, like it was like felt like the the media and everybody was. I mean, it was just like noise, like it was something between us when it really was. Like you know, and and because I, I think we were really like like I've I've watched I've said had so many dinners with Michael Jordan. You know, what I'm saying yeah. during that year, or we sitting up and you know having dinner and man. Drinking bottles of wine, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> like four, five thousand dollar bottles of wine. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. Until until you did it with MJ, you ain't done it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, but again, the, the 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 narrative out of that was like, you know, just always pitted us against each other because we yeah. had been competitors so long. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, and, and, and then so so I think after that when when things kind of went south for him in Washington um and and i stayed at the you know a poland decided to kind of house you know house the michael out of there and then they signed me to a two-year deal for some reason it was like i was the guy that got my michael out of washington so gotcha. it wasn't a, so from that it wasn't a, a, a great situation from there i mean like the it felt like the media like i, I got hurt i had a little surgery and um, missed uh, quite a few games with my knee. And, like, the, the, this is how the media is, man. Like, mm -hmm. they would just wait for me to, like, I mean, I think I, I rubbed my face or something like that. And then I get the next paper today, that was the picture in the newspaper. It's like I'm I'm holding my face at the team and stuff like that. Like Crazy. Like, I mean, how, I mean, you realize, so you, you, that was a plan. Like, like you, you contrived this plan to come here and try to get a picture of me like being somewhat disgruntled on the bench. So, I mean, so mm -hmm. it just, again, opened my eyes to, to this business and um, to the point where I was like, man, I, I, I don't want to be a part of this. I went to Ernie Grunfield and told him that, man, this, you know, it's not a situation. I mean, I, I think I did it the right way. I went to mm -hmm. it behind the scenes that I was looking for a, a situation where, where I'm coming from in Detroit, where we were winning to where now all of the, the talk is just trying to get back to the playoffs. I would, would much rather get to it. And, and it found a great situation. I was able to go to Dallas from there. Mm -hmm. um, they got back a nice piece in, in Antoine Jameson that we, they were able to, to have some success with. Um, but, you know, and Dallas was probably one of the, one of the best times of my, of, of my career. You know, I mean, it was like I went from, you know, starting to a six man. You know, a lot of, again, a lot of people had a lot of, questions about that can can he accept the, this role i mean it's like nobody even asked me about it you know what I'm saying? like you know what I'm saying you you're already you know because of who i am i mean i guess i think just from my you know my aura or whatnot it was just like oh he's not gonna accept this he's not gonna accept that maybe you just need to ask me first you know and, and, and or like you've in the past given people a reason to think that way which yeah. which, which i'm sure you didn't you know what i mean no, no it's just it was just assumed i mean i just i think because i was confident because of the success that i had up to that point and they had michael finley that i was going to automatically be the odd guy out and uh -huh. i think the you know don nelson was great about it man and he was just like stack you know, he whether it was 
you know, Jedi mind trick or, or whatever. He's like, Stack, I got six starters. I can't only uh, I can't only start five. You know, yeah. you're going to play starter minutes and you're going to be uh -huh. at the end of the game. Of course. Like, all right, then, Coach, cool. Say less. Yeah, say and, less. And then, and then it's just like, man, like, Yo, and when I like as a six man, once I, you know, uh, Nelly was like, "Stack, get, 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 so and so." Man, as soon as I stood up and took my jacket off to go to the counter, man, I got it's like a roar. In yeah. The so it's like, <laughs> man, it, this thing kind of took on a life of its own, man. Yeah, like, those yeah. Those people were so, you know, you know, they felt like I was, you know, I was. I was such a great guy for taking this sacrifice because they knew that I probably should have been starting anyway. Yeah, right? yeah. What was it like for you? What was it like for you being in that position? Um, was it like um? I mean, I, I know some people who say they they actually like coming off the bench because it's no pressure. You know what I'm saying? You kind of come in, you catch wreck, you do your thing, and when you think about it, it's all about who finishes the game anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're not in there at the starting lineup, but regardless, you, as soon as you get your name called, you're in the game, and you, you, wind up, you look at the stat chart, you wind up playing more minutes than some guys who, who may have started the game. But what was it like for you coming off the bench, and then when, when did you start to, like, really embrace it? Like, you know what, this, this, I, I'm good right here. No, I mean, I embraced it from day one because I didn't okay. have to compete for shots for, for mm -hmm. with the starters. Like, say, you guys starting the game, everybody looking to try to get themselves going. Like, as soon as, like, I, I didn't have time to run up the floor. Nelly had yeah. to play for me as soon as I stepped down on the floor. No so, I mean, and, and he was going to come to me not one time, but he was going to come to me two or three times in a row to uh -huh. see what, you know, to make sure that I got myself going. Because he knew uh -huh. that, I mean, that I had made the sacrifice of, of doing it. I mean, I That's right. Like, man, like, I'm going, like, I mean, Finn, I mean, like, I'm going at him. Like, so That's I'm right. Treating him like, I'm, I'm treating him like it's a competition every day. That's right. Practice, That's right. right. But, you know, but at the same time, I know that for the betterment of the team, and then it's like, you know, Jason Terry was coming off the bench, too. Uh -huh. So, we, like, we had, like, this bench mob. So, it kind of yeah. took on a I life mean, Jason Terry, I mean, you, Jason, I mean, that, that's, you got several starters coming off the bench, man. Yeah, like, all-stars uh, on the Van bench. Van Horn, you know what I'm saying? Oh, my like, gosh. Y'all yeah, bench was so, crazy. <laughs> so, we had, we had, we had a mob, man. Um, so, it was sort of like, I think at the time, Marquise Daniels was coming off the bench with mm -hmm. us, too. So, man, so it, it, it was just uh, one of those vibes to where, like, I, I rolled with it, and, and like I said, I, I never felt like I was able to watch the game. I kind of yeah. see more of the game, see where I could come in and, uh -huh. and do, you know, do some different things. And again, like, I always finish the game. So, like, no mm -hmm. matter what, whether we went small or whatnot, I found a way to be on the floor at the end of the game. So, it was no it doubt. Worked out great, man. And yeah. It did great for uh, great things for me, too. I mm -hmm. mean, I think, you know, just perception. Like, mm -hmm. people that didn't even know me, you know, who just – probably see me on the court and see me with a with a scowl right mm -hmm. you know and like i mean I, I don't like him anyway right mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden now you know this message or this narrative that was coming out that i was you know ex ex so accepting this this role that no one thought that i would accept uh -huh. that, you know so it just kind of changed a lot of um you know, I, I become. I went from that guy. You know, from a guy that you know some people would say was selfish early on to the ultimate locker room guy that everybody wanted to have on the team at the end of my career. So mm -hmm. I mean, that's just like again. That's why you can't let people define who you are, man. You just got to go out and live and um, treat people the right way, and, mm -hmm. and I think good things happen. No doubt. So um so. Just some, anything else you want to say about your NBA career? And then at what point, you know, tell me about the retirement and then in your mind where you, you know, where, 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 what led you to say, you know what, I, I think now is the time to kind of make, it, make a transition and close this chapter of my life. Well, no, I, I think toward the end of my career, man, I was still like, I still had a little bit of an itch that I wanted to scratch. I mean, I probably like probably year 14 or year 15, I felt like, man, this is probably enough. And then, yeah. uh, and I was like, no, nah, man, I, I went to, you know, I was down at the summer league. At, I mean, I mean, down, just to run down with the Hawks. You know, we mm -hmm. live in Atlanta. So I would go down to the run with the Hawks. And, man, like, we playing every day. And, I'm, you know, I'm feeling good. I'm, you know, I'm still having success down there. They're like, mm -hmm. yeah, you should come to camp. Yeah. Like, all right. I mean, I wound up coming to camp, making a team. Mm -hmm. and, Wind up playing three more years. <laughs> so, because I mean, I had almost was, was 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 done with it. You know, I was yeah. doing, doing some broadcasts, and I was you know working down at NBA TV and doing some uh -huh. different things there. 
And then, um, you know, I kind of got more involved with our, our, our players' union. You know, once uh -huh. I kind of got back in and things that I didn't really pay a lot of attention to when I was yeah. you know, early in. Now, mm -hmm. you know, understanding the business of basketball and how yep. to kind of help things there because we were kind of coming out of a bad place with, you, mm -hmm. know, some, you know, Billy Hunter and some different things that was going on with our players' union. It wasn't, wasn't really a positive. So, you mm -hmm. know, I was voted as the first vice president of, of our players' union. Oh, that's and, awesome, man. Yeah, so so that, that really kind of, you know, started the, the ball of us kind of getting some of the right people in and, and trying to help us and to – to come out of that the right way, you know, and mm -hmm. some of the uh, things that you, you're seeing now, some of the benefits that, that we, that you're getting, like our players having full health benefits and stuff. Those mm -hmm. were some of the things that was at the forefront of, of, uh, on my mind, you know. Oh, saying? no doubt. Not, another thing was <clears throat> making sure that we kind of reached back to these young players. I still feel that the players unions across the respective sports should reach back and, and, and get all players in high school. I mean, yep. that, they, until they have someone that's speaking on their <clears> behalf, <throat> they're never going to get what's, what's due to them. You know uh -huh. what I'm I mean, I'm, I'm here, I'm in college athletes, and, you know, you hear a lot of the things about the name, image, and likeness and stuff, but they haven't done anything with it. You know? mm -hmm. So hopefully now that there's kind of a change at the top with the um, – with you know, with government, you know, yeah. we have Republicans that we're going, we see some change that they're not uh -huh. just going to be able to just sweep it under the rug and not do something that's you know, you know that that, that these kids deserve. Like I said, mm -hmm. they, they're, they're working and they you know, and they and they need to earn, and it's not the same as everybody else on on campus. It's not the same as uh, soccer or golf or the baseball or any of that you know mm -hmm. the, the real revenue drivers on all these college campuses are power five sports is football and basketball yep for and, sure uh, so and so and i and i think that you know if you got some virtuoso in music or whatnot that has some special talent you know not everybody in the in the band is going to be able to go to <laughs> a deal that's right, right. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, so again so i think that's it's the right. same thing when you got standout basketball players that do you know football players they need to be thought about in, 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 in kind of that same light. So hopefully we're, we're getting close to that, um, mm -hmm. to, to figuring out something. But again, like these, these folk, are, they're saying they're not, they don't want to negotiate against themselves. So until mm -hmm. the players have someone, you know, that, that, that's voicing something for their behalf, I think we're, we're going to kind of stay in this space. So hopefully that happens soon, man. But I, I would love to see that happen, that there's some way that, that – because it's different. You can't just have blanket for baseball, football, and basketball. There's different. There's yep. too many different dynamics there. Totally. So you, yep. you need basketball people trying to negotiate things for the basketball players who really understand that culture. Yeah. And then you know, yep, yep. Yeah. yeah. Hey, so. so before before we talk about life after basketball and, and, and then bringing the people up to you know, kind of you know, currently what you're doing now, and then we'll wrap up. Um, um, go, going back to uh, in, in NBA days and you know all that kind of stuff. In Philly, uh, I see a people had, couple people had mentioned it. Uh, people want to hear about um, uh, this Kobe. I, I heard a little bit about a Kobe experience, a Kobe Kobe versus Stack at, at St. Joe's. Tell me about that. Man, you know, <laughs> and to the blessed the dead, man, like I said, I, you know, there's a narrative that came out, but I never really said, um, I never really heard it from Kobe. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So I don't really put much credit, credence to it. And like, gotcha. Yeah. A bit like we played one on one, but again, I tell nobody at that time, man, was was beating me one on one like that, you know. And mm -hmm. I don't even remember us really having those type of uh, games, you gotcha. know, like that. But yeah, we did compete. Uh, John Lucas had us on the tracks, okay. Had us on, you know, doing a lot of things to, to, together. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the, the stories that that came out, I mean, his lore just grew. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I mean, they act like the Kobe Bryant that we saw, you know, at the end of his career was the Kobe Bryant that was 18 years old. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, and mm -hmm. it just wasn't the case. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, but, no but, doubt. Again, but, man, he, he was a great player, great, uh, you know, at even at that time. You could mm -hmm. you just saw see, see the skills. Like, the, his, sure. his skills were – like, he was a guard. A hundred percent, yeah. And, and thing, but I wasn't even a guard. I told you I was a power forward. I came – I had to learn – the two guard position as a uh, mm -hmm. as a pro. So uh -huh. somebody probably would somebody say uh, Kobe Bryant was a, a better shooting guard than me at, at that time. They were probably mm -hmm. absolutely right. Mm -hmm. you know, right. But I became an all star at my position, but and and never played it until I, I stepped into the pros. No so, doubt. So again, so I don't 
really hold a lot of credence to what anybody say. I mean, I knew what happened in those moments when mm -hmm. I was there, but you know, if you know, I, I, I mean, we it's such a tragedy, you know, yeah. to lose someone like that that I don't have nothing negative. <sighs> if y'all want to say Kobe Bryant, you know, beat me a hundred times, all <laughs> mean Kobe Bryant. I know that's right. A hundred times, man. I know that's right. That's, man. that's bless, where I'm at with that. God bless, bless, dead, bless, bless being man. Hey, so um, so life after basketball. Um, tell me about your transition into coaching, and and then and then lead us up to um your experience and what you're doing now. Yeah, I think uh, man, I got into coaching really. I mean, even as a player, I think those last couple of years that I played, you know, that was my my mindset. You know, kind of like play it. coach, or or, or yeah. you knew that was what you wanted to do in the future. Yeah, I mean, like that, I knew that's kind of what I wanted to do, you know. So that last year in Brooklyn, you know, I was mm -hmm. I was going there. I, I didn't really even expect to play. I mean, okay, I, I was just kind of transitioning to hopefully kind of get in with Avery, you know, because you know like, he coached me in Dallas as well, mm -hmm. and you know he used to like you know come on say they tried to hear my voice. You know, you run the film session today, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so, I, so I already kind of was in that in that mode of okay of, of, of teaching, and then I had an AAU program. I went back and watched my son. Mm -hmm. One day I had some watching a game. I think he's probably seventh, eighth grade. And I was like, yo, man, they were just rolling the balls out there. I was like, man, I got some time. I'm here at the end of my career yeah. now. Yeah. So I can pour into these kids. And then the next mm -hmm. thing I know, I fell in love with watching them getting better. That's you know addic it's a It's an addictive thing, isn't it? <laughs> it's addictive, man. Because they get, they get better so fast. Yeah. Right? At that young age. I mean, because honestly, I mean, I love what I do. I love working with pros. I love mm -hmm. where I'm at now working with, with college kids, but I still, like, my ultimate passion is teaching younger kids. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, I really like to, because they don't have any, you know, like, many bad habits yet. Mm -hmm. So it's yep. like if you yep. can get to them before they start to build those bad habits and you yep. can get, kind of start putting some some, some good actions into to, to, to their mechanics and their fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Um, I enjoy that that aspect of it, and then, like I said, from there, I, I, I had an AAU team, uh, and and we started winning. Like I said, and then all of a sudden, Adidas, you know, reached out to us mm -hmm. um, to to come on. Brandon Ingram from my hometown. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. Brandon Ingram is from your hometown. I heard about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So he was like, yeah, he's one of our. <laughs> Uh, kids that I had since I was like seven, you know, like he was in the. Oh, time. word! Yeah. Oh, that's what's up! Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. So Adidas wanted, like, said so they they sponsored us, um, and then from that, uh, we had success. They had a team they would take over to Treviso, Italy, you know, every year to kind of play in this uh, Euro camp. Okay. And um, and they asked me to coach that team, and there, mm -hmm. you know, they had never they had never won any games over there, man. They would go over there and get smashed by all these. <laughs> And we and I took a team over there. We won one game, and then the next year I went over there. We won it all. Yeah. So, and, and then like this is like every <clears throat> manager, every assistant coach, you know, in, in the league is there. Like they're, they're mm -hmm. represented there. And um and so after that, I mean, they got a chance to kind of watch me interact with with, with those guys, those kids. And um, Masai Ujiri reached out to me about they was looking to add a. Um, hey, it's a it's a little muffled. It's a little bit muffled. I said, can you hear me now? Yep, that's perfect. Yep. Okay, I said uh, uh, Masai Ujiri reached out to me like they were uh -huh. looking to add a um, another former player to to, to Dwayne's Casey staff. So okay. I went up and interviewed, uh, and man, I got the job. You know, what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so from there, I was part of the player development. The next year, they asked me to be the you know the G League coach. You know, wow, so that's dope, up, man. I wound up taking the G League job. We went it, you know, win a championship that first year. Oh wait, wait! You you can't you step right into your first coaching <laughs> situation and, and, and wanted want a chip. Yeah, want a chip. And um, next year, you know, I'm saying with a whole different uh, cast of characters, we go right back to the finals. We lose in the wow. finals, but um, so I just I think that was uh, that was huge. I mean, and mm -hmm. like I was on a lot of people was like, man, you already on. You know, you, you I mean, you're on the NBA bench. Just stay there. You know, be patient mm -hmm. and what, what not. And I was like, man, no matter what, you know, they're gonna always say that I didn't have any head coaching experience. Uh -huh, you know, so sure, you know what yeah. we deal with, right? So uh -huh, we don't get exactly. those opportunities thrown at us the way that yep. some people do. And yep. so I felt like the way that I could avoid, you know, that noise was to okay, take a step back, so to speak. Uh -huh. yep. And and while I took that step step back and went and had success, I did. I catapulted a lot of people, you know what I'm yeah. saying, where yeah. I had a lot of buzz for some NBA jobs. 
Mm -hmm. And then you know the job here at Vanderbilt came you know came available. The the mm -hmm. uh, the AD <laughs> that got hired at the AD he was the president of the G League. You know, oh wow! So he got a chance to see me you know in that element of building teams and and building talent new and know you know here at Vanderbilt where the academic standards are a little bit tougher that you know mm -hmm. player development has to be a huge part of mm -hmm. you know your success and you getting better. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was targeted right away to come in. And like I said, like I said, I could probably, I could very well, you know, held out to, and possibly had an NBA head coaching job. But this is one I had in the, in my hand. So, mm -hmm. like, like I, I say it all the time. My mom always say a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. So, I mean, That's I don't right. know what's going on down the road. But I got an opportunity to get back to what I want to do. Like I said, mm -hmm. it's cool being an assistant. Um, but at the same time, you know, I asked myself, would I rather make suggestions or would I, whether I rather make decisions? And, <laughs> that's right. And, and, I love that. And, and, I'm a, and I'm more of a decision guy. So, oh, no, that's right. So, I love uh, that. So I jumped on it, man. And it's, it's, it's been great. You know, we've got a, a great situation here where we're building. Uh, got some young, play, you know, young, young players. Last year, I mean, we had a string of bad luck. Uh, you know, lost our best player. Mm -hmm. um, going right into our first conference game, they had 24 mm -hmm. points right of our lineup. The year before, they, you know, they they lost uh, Dar Darius Garland the same way. Mm -hmm. So we had a little bit of a string of uh, bad luck there. But but now, you know, we feel like we're we're poised to, to to really make a you know make a run. We still build and got to you know get our talent pulled up. We got some nice pieces coming in in the 21 class. But mm -hmm. you know, we're re really excited about being here, being in Nashville, and. And trying to, to to get this program back to to, to where it once was. Yeah. What 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 do you um, what do you most enjoy about um like you already kind of spoke to it like you know your like when you talked about um um the experience and what it was like how addictive it was you know coaching your son and kind of what you you know how, how how fulfilling it was but at the college level like you you did it with the young kids and you know you, you was in the pros with the adults and all that but now you're right in the middle you know what I'm saying well a, a little bit above the middle you know it's not high school it's college. You know, mm -hmm. tell me what that experience is like for you from a like from a father's perspective, from a mentor perspective, you know, from a black male's perspective in this day and age. You know, what's that ex experience like for you? What, what is it like for you? And then how important is it for you to be in that position, you think, in, in, in 2020? No, I mean, I, I mean, I don't take it for granted at all, man, because, I mean, I, I have three kids of my own, you know, mm -hmm. I have uh, um you know, my, my oldest is 23, graduated from North Carolina, he, you know. Oh, no he, doubt. Yeah, yeah, play, play football there. Uh, my daughter is a senior at Syracuse right now, and and, and my youngest um, is, uh, he's he's 20, right? So mm -hmm. it's like, so I got, you know, right in this age group are the kids that I'm de I'm dealing with. So I yeah. mean, a lot of their same things that I dealt with them as, as high schoolers and, you know, now that as young adults, it's the same thing that that, that face these kids. So I'm, I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I had to stay in the air. They have challenges that and different things that they deal with. But mostly, man, just about being professional. I I, I try to approach this as as a pro, you know, professional business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you know, we got you got to be on time. You got to be, you know, you know, your, your academics are your priority. Yeah. And if you don't take care of that priority, then you can't come here and do anything. I know so, that's right. So, I mean, like that, that's just the reality of, of it is where we're, I feel like we're in a special place. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody can't come here. Yeah. Right? I, I can't yep. go, I can't walk into any random gym <laughs> and just say, OK, I love the way that kid plays. I want to sign him. I can't yeah. I have to be able to get him in school. He's going to have to have right. an SAT score. I mean, SAT score uh, of, of at least a thousand or he's going to have uh -huh. to have at least 20 on the ACT. You know, mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, and again, and still be able to play at a power five level. Exactly, they exist, and, and we and, and we seek them out, you know. Mm -hmm. But but again, but at the same time, it's almost like a plus. It's like we don't, you know, we we, we have our targets. We have the guys that that we know fit the bill of, of you know who who we want because it's like the the people that have had, um, to had that discipline early on, you know, academic. That that's what the, those parents want. This type of situation, they that's want right. a, a, a Ivy League education, mm -hmm. but at the same time playing. At, at the highest level in the yep. see competing against the Kentuckys, the Tennessees, the Florida, mm -hmm. you yep. know, and, and I feel like, you know, that that's my challenge to be able mm -hmm. to show that we can compete at that highest level and do it with a special kid, you know, special, that's right. you know, some, some smart kids that are going to be some, you know, some, you know, help change the world going forward. Honestly. Mm -hmm.
No doubt. Um, I just got a, got, a, got a couple more questions for you. Just want to let our amazing audience know. Um, um, message to you guys, audience. I appreciate y'all, you know, being with us, you know, throughout this amazing interview. You know, transparency is, is priceless. The, the stories are crazy. Um, I just have a few more questions for Stack, and I'm going to turn it over to the people. Quick little Q&A, see if the people may, may have any, any questions for you about your career, any okay. life things, any coaching questions, anything like that. Um, just reflecting back over your life, man, um, and your journey and your experience so far, uh, what, what are some things that you've learned about, about yourself, you know, from the game of basketball? What are some things that the game of basketball has taught you? Well, man, I just think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a share. I mean, you got you to gotta give, you know what I'm saying? I'm a giver, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I mean, I think that I, I compete, you know, I, I want to win. I want, uh, I want to be successful. But at the same time, I know that there's a lot of people that, uh, that helped me get here, like I said mm -hmm. before. And, um, and and I don't take that for granted. And I want to make sure that I, 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 I give back and sow into other people's lives the same way. I mean, it was, mm -hmm. like, you know, it, it was unbelievable feeling to, you know, you know, watch Brandon Ingram sign a, a contract for $158 million last week. Crazy, crazy. You know, <laughs> just knowing that you were, you know, a part of his life. You no, know, man, I was just cussing this kid out a few years ago about messing up the, the honor bar at the hotel in Vegas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you going in there and, you know, smashing this bar when you could have went walked to the CVS and got <laughs> everything that, you, that we just paid for. So it's like... <laughs> Man, give my money back. <laughs> That's funny. But no, That's funny. man, it's just, it's just amazing. And, like, you know, just knowing that we have that, um, that, that you've been a part of that. I mean, from the, the strength and conditioning, all of the pieces that, you know, I put around him. You know, I personally, mm -hmm. you know, put around him to try mm -hmm. to get a jump start there. The, the conversations that we have, you know, when he – was down when things weren't going right right in LA that you know, you know, like I said, it's not easy, man. These mm -hmm. kids aren't aren't just they're they're not robots. They're not machines. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're humans. They have emotions. They have feelings. And and when you can, you know, say the right things to them to to help them get through a tough situation and see them bounce back and come back even stronger, man, that, that that's more gratifying probably than anything that I've done on the basketball court. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, like I said, all that, yeah, I can go back to a bunch of moments, but that, that, all that stuff is fleeting. Right? Mm -hmm. Like I said, you know, you it's in, when you're in the moment, it feels great, but you know, after that, like I said, you just it's like chasing the fantasy. What's next? What's next? Yeah. But with with this, you can actually see something that's tangible, and and, mm -hmm. and, you, and you see like, man, you know, not not that I'm not going to take sole credit in no way, shape, form, or fashion, but I know I was a part of of, of helping him achieve. Mm -hmm. what he's achieved as well as a lot of other people that you know i see whether the fred van vliet's or the norman powell's or the pascal c icons you know those mm -hmm. are the kids that was with me at the you know in the g league that i'm watching film with and you know and and you know, talking to them the same way that i'm talking to these kids now to help them try to get better and, uh -huh. now, and they're the world champions now mm -hmm. you, know, and you watch these kids so it's like yeah man a lot of people play you know have been a part of that but i was too and, no doubt. And, and so I think that was the um, – feel, feels real good, man. Honestly. No doubt. Um, if you can go back in time, one of my last questions, if you can go back in time and, and – and, you know, so picture yourself, you know, at your age now, sitting down with, um, you know, 14-year-old Stack, what advice what, – what's one thing that you what, – what's one thing that you say to him, um, just one thing that you say to him, just about, just about the future or about, you know, about life or just about, you know, the road ahead? Yeah, I mean, I just think for, you know, I mean, it's not a lot that I would change, man, because I felt like where I'm I'm here, you know, my mom always said, what's for you is for you, mm -hmm. right? And, and, I, and I don't feel like I would, you know, want to do much different than what I did. But I just think uh, from a game of basketball, I probably would, you know, handle more, right, at yeah. 13 or 14 because uh -huh. I was, again, I was playing. I, I thought I was going to be seven foot, and I wound up, you know, topping out at six five. <laughs> you know? So I think though, that – that from that standpoint, and I, and I just think in, in everybody since you could be, you could have a little you know, more humility, right? Yeah. Again, just to, to to walk into situations and you know, and it's like things that you might say in jest, you know, and 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 people really take for granted. Like you know, I mean, I have a good game, you know, a couple good games when I first came into the league, 
you know, and it was like, you know, yeah, like I said, you know, so that's pretty easy, right? Mm -hmm. you know, so, and then it's like, oh, man, I, he's saying it's easy. I, 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 and then all of a sudden, I beat Michael Jordan, like I said, uh -huh. like going, to, going into that game for Michael I didn't remember, man, I didn't really remember saying none of that. Like I said, uh -huh. because the thing about it, it would have been a lot. Because when I, when I played Michael Jordan in college, when he came to visit when I was in North Carolina, we didn't even keep a score. Like I said, uh -huh. we were just going around, messing around. And, you know, messing around, we, yeah. yeah. And it wasn't like we ever said, all right, we're about to play the five or nothing like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just messing around, showing uh -huh. different moves and different things mm -hmm. like that. But then all of a sudden, there's a narrative that came out that I beat Michael Jordan and they told him that I said that I beat oh, him. And, you know, <laughs> and then it's like, you know, it's like, oh, the, the Jerry Stackhouse game, Michael Jordan scored 48 on him. Yeah, I caught about I caught about 18 of them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, they, they act like Bernie Maxwell and, you know, the Sean Higgins and, and uh, everybody else that was trying to guard him. But uh -huh. he gave me 48, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> in three quarters. So, so I just think that's the... Oh. You know, that's just the things that, that I dealt with because of who I am, right? Like, uh -huh. you know, like, like all the people that was in that gym, you know, uh, when Kobe Bryant was in high school. Uh -huh. I'm the mm -hmm. one that he, he beat one-on-one. -on -one. All them pros in that gym. So, I mean, mm -hmm. like, I think it feels it, – it, it, there's an aura that I carry yeah. that, okay, I, you did it to him. Like, uh -huh. And so, so I, I wear that as a badge of pride. Even gotcha. though, you know, it's kind of meant to be somewhat, you know, demeaning. Uh -huh. But to, to me, but at the same time, it's really an honor. Like, you know, like talking about, uh, you know, Lionel Simmons in there mm -hmm. or whoever yeah. else that was in that gym that was really yeah. good players. But mm -hmm. Stackhouse. Stackhouse. Oh, he did it himself. Yeah. So it's like, man, no so I, I, I can accept that. I can live with it. I got, I got shoulders big enough to carry it. I know that's right, man. Wait, we're going to get to this Q&A. Then I'm going to say my thank yous in, in the way that I do. Um Billy, uh, Billy T. Stanton uh, wants to know what did you major in at North Carolina, and just want to let just want to let the viewers know now is the Q and A section. Um, you know, we're gonna let my man Stack go in a minute, but um, anybody has any questions, any really good solid questions for Stack, any curiosities you want to know, start typing them right now in the comment section, and he'll address them as we go along. Um, but uh, I wanted to know what what did you what did you major in at North Carolina? I was an, I was an African American history major um, in gotcha. North Carolina. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was. Uh, started out as a, a sociology major, and then when I came back to, to finish, a lot of the courses that I uh, needed wasn't even offered in the summer program. So mm -hmm. I just I was just trying to get my degree, man. So so I, African American history. Got you. Um, uh, Bray uh, Bray Shaw or senior wants to know: um, Could you see yourself in the Hall of Fame in the future? And if so, uh, who would you get to announce you? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I I would hope so. I mean, one day that I mean, I felt like my body would work at at all three three levels, you know, from high school to college and the pros, and and, and still with my coaching career, hopefully that I you know be able to get there one day. And I, I think I I probably love for um, for Sheed to 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 come in and announce me. Hopefully that'll we, be we do each other. So I mean, no I, doubt that'll be legendary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we've um, always been linked together, man. Um, yeah. So so I think that's. Um, yeah, that, that that would be that would be huge for both of us. No doubt. Billy Hoyer wants to know, um, what's the greatest thing Dean Smith ever taught you? Um, you know, you know I think this is so you know cliche ish, but you know it's like um, you know, play hard, play smart, you know, play together. You know, what I'm saying mm -hmm. I think you, you you live by by those three things. I mean, I think you you know want to have poise and understand the game, but I just think from a, a life standpoint was. You know, never judge a person until you walked in their shoes. I think mm -hmm. those are those some of the main thoughts that I mean. I, I I still share those same offensive and defensive emphasis as well as those thoughts of the day that that I had when I was coming through North Carolina with these kids here at Vanderbilt right now. Mm -hmm. Um, some uh political asylum refugee. Shout out to you. Appreciate the uh, appreciate the love, big dog. Um, uh, how good is Pippen Jr. and how do you think you'll finish the season at Vandy? Uh, Pippen's been, man, that kid's going to be really, really good, man. Like I said, they, you know, if he gets that big growth spurt like his dad did, you know. Oh, that, that, is, that, is, that, is that Scotty's son? Yeah, yeah, Scotty's son. Oh, no son. doubt. Yeah, yeah. So he's going, man, he, he's he's a really, really talented point guard. He's blazing his own path in his own mm -hmm. right. Um, so I, I think he has a chance to play at the next level. You know, he's still learning, you know, understanding time and score as a point guard. 
but you know he you know he, he definitely has the the, the skill set and the and the work ethic to to mm -hmm. get there you know and i think as, as a team you know we we're, we're pretty much going to go as as does he go you know mm -hmm. i mean we got a couple other guys primary scores that we're counting on to have big years but um he's really the you know the the engine of, of what we're doing so i'm i'm counting on i put a lot of i gave him the ball from day 1 i got a kid mm -hmm. that that got drafted, Saban Lee, that got drafted in the second round, 34th to Detroit this year. And mm -hmm. I still gave Scotty the ball last year because gotcha. I, I, I'm confident that this kid has, has, has the it and the tools to be able to get it done um, for us and at the next level. Gotcha. Um, GW for Life wants to know, who is your mentor, at, at, I guess, any, at any uh, you know, level of your life? Um, I think, you know, obviously my, my, again, my family has been there for me. Like my, my mom and dad, you know, I had, you know, people from my hometown, uh, that were, were big. My, my, my junior high school coach, um, you know, he was, you know, just, you know, he took me to a lot of games and, you know, different things, you know, college and, and, and when I was in high school, just make you expose me to a lot of different things, um, from, a a business, you know, mindset. Charles Grantham, who was, you know, he used to be the the executive director for the, the for the PA back in like the the eighties and nineties, eighties uh, early nineties. He was, um, you know, he's still someone that I talk to. You know, just gives me a lot of nuggets about, you know, business. He's all he, he was always telling me. But because before I got this job, man, I was going back to business school. You know, okay. Saying? Yeah, so I I, I would I went down to Emory and was going to do their executive program, mm -hmm. and the, right before I you know I got you know got that call from Toronto and mm -hmm. so I wound up taking it. But I mean, he was always telling me like, you guys, you know, you, you miss so much of you know just being in the NBA that you 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 should go back to school. You should go back mm -hmm. and, and so and I was I was listening and I was going to decide to do that. So he's just one guy that when I talk about all this stuff with the players union and how we need to, you know, help, you know, you know, kids in high school and also a lot of that information and the knowledge that I get has come from him. So Charles Grantham is definitely one of my biggest mentors uh, away from the game. No doubt. A few people asked the, like the same type question. Um, I guess to sum it up, who is the toughest player you played against at any level? Or, you know, some somebody else said, you know, toughest player, you know, that kind of gave you, gave you, gave you problems, toughest defender, mm -hmm. but toughest player you played against at any level? Uh, I don't know. Probably, I, I, like, it's hard not to say him, but I think well, Mitch Richmond was a, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, he was one that, like, like because he was strong, he was a strong guard that could post mm -hmm. and do a lot of the same things that I did. You know, he was a tough guy. I could, I mean, I could go back at him, you know, mm -hmm. offensively and get, you know, get what I wanted. But you know, he was he was a bear. The uh, trail, you know, Spreewell was a bear mm -hmm. down there. So and um, but you know, again, you know, M, you know, you can't, you can always, yeah, you know, put him right there. But I think those no those, those two guys were, were some other guys that I said. And but the guy probably that gave me the most problems. You know, from a from a defensive standpoint, was uh, Bobby Fields, man. Okay. Like, yeah, he he was strong. I mean, he uh -huh. was, yeah, and he could move his feet. Like like mm -hmm. I like you say, I used to attack him one way or the other. Even if yeah. he was too slow, I would put it on the bounce. And if you know, if you had good foot speed, <laughs> I would go in the post up and try to post you up. But mm -hmm. he could guard me in the post and could guard me on the perimeter. So he, you know, I definitely had some some rough shoot nights against Bobby. Fields. <laughs> no doubt, Bobby, Bobby Fields. Yes, sir. Um, Karam H wants to know, um, how's your golf game coming along? Oh, it's coming along, man. It ain't where <laughs> I wanted to be, but, 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 but it's definitely coming on. I mean, I love golf. I love uh, love getting out there, man. It's one of my uh, one of my passions right now. I, I didn't play a lot at all when I when I was you know in the league or anything like that. It's something that I picked up really over the last couple of years. But um, but but I, I definitely enjoy the game. Mm -hmm. um, Jay Stackhouse is that is that a relative of yours? Uh, yeah, it might be my son. Okay, I see a Jay Stackhouse right here. Let me pin this comment. A uh, Jay Stackhouse says, uh, "What's up, fam? Um, who's who's your favorite NBA NBA player today? You know, a fav you know oh. player of today that you like?" Oh man, I just told you, Brandon Ingram, my favorite player. <laughs> no doubt, <laughs> no <laughs> I, doubt. I keep it, but now I think uh, uh, guys that I that, that I really enjoy watching play um, is uh, is Luca. Okay. Luca, Luca, mm -hmm. Luca, Lucas. I mean, he's all over. He's different. Right play. <laughs> he's, he's tough. I mean, you know, I mean, it's hard not to say LeBron. I mean, like, you know, he, he's still getting it done. He's doing it at a high level, um, man. But but Luca is probably my 
my favorite to watch right now. Still, I mean, and James Harden too. I mean, I think he just, you know, from a as as a two guard man. I just I, I don't think that we've ever seen anybody like him. You know, mm-hmm. saying that, that score the, the ball, you know, shoot the three, can get to where he wants to on the floor, can post up, can defend when he wants to. Um, man, I mean, like I said, I really, like I said, when you talk about one of the I know he hadn't had the success of, of winning, so to speak, but when you just talk about getting it done and a skill set from, from that guard spot, I don't know if there's ever been a better, anybody better. Got you. My man, uh, Mr. Holmes, my man, Duber. Um, from Coatesville, uh, one, one of Rip's guys. Um, he Earlier in the broadcast, he had said um, something about you in the kitchen. He said, he said I guess he heard from Rip, that you was a pretty good chef, man. Yeah, is, is that yeah, true? yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we can dice a little bit, man. Like, <laughs> no, no. I, I, I like to break bread with the best of them. Why the shout right, so, out so, Coatesville? So, 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 so check this out. Yeah, shout out, shout out to the Ville, man. Shout out to Coatesville. So how about this? Um, it, it, it's, 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 it's summertime. You know what I'm saying? It's in the evening. You got some folks coming over to the crib. Um, you want to show off? What, what you, what you, what, what's the spread? If you want, you want to uh, show off. You want to, you want to impress some people. What you going, what you going, what you going to fix? I see. I started last night. You know, what I'm saying okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have started that on the day of. I'm, I'm okay. marinating. You know, what I'm saying I got those ribs. You know, I get mm-hmm. the cooler out. You know, put mm-hmm. my marinade on them. You know, same thing with my chicken. You know, marinate, put them in the bags and everything. Uh-huh. And then, you know, I'm gonna fire that grill up. You know what I'm saying? Put the charcoal. It ain't no no gas. I mean, I do no use doubt. a little bit of gas just to keep the heat. But, mm-hmm. if, you know, you can't cook with gas alone. You got to have charcoal and wood. Mm-hmm. If you're not cooking with charcoal and wood, it's not real barbecue. So No doubt. That, 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 <laughs> that, that's how we get down on it. You know, I lead, I lead the size, too. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a barbarian, right? I'm, I'm going to handle all the meat. So I'm, I'm going to let wifey handle all of the size. So. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Um, T. Wallace, 45. Shout out to my guy, T. Wallace. That's uh, Rashid's cousin. Yeah, um, yeah. What up, man? T. Wallace. Yes, sir. He um, he said, what was it like playing with Mad Max um, your rookie year? Uh, man, it was uh, it was fun. Man, Max taught me a lot, man. Again, like mm-hmm. I said, coming from not really knowing that guard spot of, you know, I was getting killed on screens. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't guard a lot of that in North Carolina. I was guarding yeah. the post and you know, whatnot, we're chasing off screens. And then he taught me this, you know, he's like, come here, Pimp, come here, Pimp. You got you know, <laughs> that Talking like, hey, you got, you got, you got to put your hand on his, on his outside hip. So when you get on that outside hip, you got to nudge his ass. Damn, they push his ass down. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay, all right. And from that, man, like, I was guarding the Allen Houston's and the Ray Allen's, all those guys, man, they hated me because when, when Vern taught me that little, little move of getting on that outside hip and nudging them, they would never be able to come off the shoot. And, and to the officials, it looked like it's their momentum, right? Uh-huh. So I'm coming off this. It looked like their momentum is bringing them there, but I'm giving them that little nudge, man. That that that's something that that's one of those little nuances. One of those old pros was taught me, but but it was good, man. I felt like every night I had a guy that, that you know, if we didn't win the game, we could whip your ass. I know that's game. right. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. Hey, this next question is pretty good. I'm glad they I'm glad they asked this because um because this is something that, that I talk to young people about often, especially like recruits and all that kind of stuff. This is the social social media uh age, social media era. You know, the kids are on social media posting all kind of stuff. Um, do how, how, do it, do you guys check out the kids' social media and and and, and you know and how important? I guess I guess. And then however you want to answer it. And then how important is it for kids to have a clean social media, not to have a whole bunch of wild things on there? You know what I'm saying? Or, or does that matter? What are your thoughts about the whole social media thing? And, you know. Yeah. I mean, I think so, man. I think, again, it's, it's kind of, um, you know, it, it's tough. I mean, it's, it's a new age. Everybody, yeah. you know, on social media right now. I try to tell our guys to, you know, again, be uh, in all things moderation. Right. Uh-huh. I mean, that, yeah. that was one that was one thing that my mom used to always say and live by. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. even with basketball. Like I said, mm-hmm. you shouldn't even do basketball. As much as I love basketball, I don't even need to do basketball all the time. Eating yeah. or eating or breathing. I mean, don't even do nothing uh, all the time. So I think mm-hmm. you just need to give yourself, you know, a little little break from, from it sometimes. And it's hard because that's where most of us get our news from now. It's not like yeah. we, we watch it. Six o'clock news. We're home, you know, to, to watch the six o'clock news. So we get our news from Twitter. We get our news from Instagram. Get it mm-hmm. from, from that timeline. 
So I'm not saying that, you know, to to avoid it, but at the same yeah. time, you got to be smart. And a, lot, and, and a lot of people, I mean, do, are making judgments on kids because of what yeah. is put out on social media. So they have to be careful about it. But again, I think it's, um, you know, we, you know, the type of kids that, that we attract, that we know that's going to, you know, be able to come to Vanderbilt and be successful, you know, they, 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 they don't have that type of presence, you know. So, and, and, but, but again, like, you guys just got to teach because it's not, um, you know, it's a lot of kids just don't know. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, I say it all the time, man, it's a lot, uh, with a lot of these kids, it's not their fault what they don't know. You know, but it, but it's it's it, but it's our you know priority to mm -hmm. and prerogative that we should should teach them to make sure mm -hmm. that they understand. It. Now, if they make a decision not to do yep. what's right, then yeah. uh, then okay, now it's on you. But if you yeah, know, but 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 it's not their fault what they don't know. I appreciate you saying that, man. Um, because you know, in, in all things, especially when when people make decisions, you know, adults, no matter what age, um, it, those 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 are definitely good teachable moments. Opposed mm -hmm. to judging someone, you know, they may not know, just like you said. And that may be the first time that they're hearing this this little correction or whatever. So, but teachable moments, man. That's a blessing, man. Hey, quick, quick, got to give a quick shout out to my wife, uh, Stars Diva. That's wifey right there. It, it, okay. It's pretty, it's pretty cool because she's normally sleep. Like when I do my interviews, like she'll, she she may sit there, she may tune in and out a little bit. But I go downstairs, I'm like, babe, you see the interview? Would you would you tuned in? She be down there, <laughs> down there snoring on the couch. But listen, she tuned in for this. I know this. I know this interview was classic. Cause she was here with us the entire time. So shout out to Keisha, wifey. She she's definitely a fan. She's enjoyed, you know. She's been commenting, and she said, uh, uh, she she, she she's a foodie. She has a food okay. blog. So we, I'm sure when you was talking about the uh, how you marinate the ribs and all, that's she, she talking about trying to get invited to the cookout. Oh man, come on, come on! I told her she had a couple of those sides for me, man. I got you. I got she's you. She's a beast in the kitchen. She's a beast, so it'll work out. I, I, I appreciate you hanging with us, Keisha. Thank you. No doubt. Hey, um, I just want to I just want to say thank you so much, man. Like like I said at the top of the, at the top of the hour, thank you so much for your time. Um, this was more than I, I, I this was this this exceeded my my expectations. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, I just want to say thank you so much, man, for your contribution. Thank you for your transparency. Um, you know, thanks for just you know sharing your spirituality, talking about your mom, and just kind of being so um so transparent with us here on the platform, man. Thank you for all the gems. Thank you for being a mentor. Um, just an awesome brother you are, man. Just want to say thank you so much, man, for Big Star and the Raw Sports family, man. Um, just thank you, man. I can't thank you enough, man. I appreciate you having me, man. Keep doing your thing, man. Appreciate for sure. You. Um, any any last minute things you want to say? Any shout outs you want to give to anybody before we tune out? Uh, again, no, no, just man, just my, to my family, man, my wife, you know, she's my my rib, you know, too. So just like so I. I Appreciate appreciate her and everything that she deal with with with, with my family and, and and protect your mental health, man. Again, like I said, we don't talk about that enough with these kids, too. I mean, they again the challenges that that they have. Make sure that we're talking to them and we're speaking to them and and and, and having them, you know, share their thoughts, you know, because they have a lot of things going on, you know, in their world, man. So make make sure that we. Uh, we're all constantly, especially with COVID and everything going on. Everybody try to stay safe, try to stay healthy, and stay prayed up, man. And, That's right. And, and, and my, my wife, health. Keisha, just busted in the door. She said, "Don't don't finish this interview without giving a, sh a big shout out to Mama Stackhouse." Oh no shout doubt, no Stackhouse, doubt. Mini P Stackhouse, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what you tell me? Hey, start running now. You're gonna be running the rest of your life. You know? That's right, That's, man. That, 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 that was huge. That's right, man. One last thing, uh, tradition here on Legends Week, man, it's kind of like, you know, passing the baton. Um, if it's anyone um, that you, you know, you know, you've experienced Legends Week now, if it's anyone that you think um, would, would kind of fit the, fit the platform, if it's anybody that, that you want to endorse, um, just send me a message and let me know if it's anybody that you, you know, possibly be able to connect me to another legend, um, okay. somebody, you know, from the culture. I greatly would appreciate it, man. You know, somebody that, that you would endorse to, uh, you know, help me get in contact with to get on here. That'd be a blessing, man. Absolutely, man. I, I, I definitely do that, bro. I, I, I think about it a little bit more, make sure we get somebody else on here to, to keep this going, man. I, I really enjoyed it. Yes, sir. What are your thoughts about the platform, about Legends Week, about, about what I'm doing here, man? What are your thoughts before we tune out? No, man, I think we'll it's great, it man. I, I mean, I think it's great just being able to, to, to talk to different people, different personalities that, uh, and to share their experiences. Everybody's experiences is different, you know, and, and like I said, everybody has a story. And, and yep. I think that, you know, it might, some of the stories might, you know, a lot of parallels, might be a lot of parallels with a lot mm -hmm. of them, but there's always going to be something different, you know. Like no doubt. Said, 
you know, what's for you is for you and, and kind of, you know, my experience, nobody else can see it through, through my, through my, through my eyes, but, but, mm -hmm. you know, and my, they might, you know, see something and you could look at the same thing and mm -hmm. you have a different perspective from what you saw. And we looked at the, at the, at the exact same thing. So I just think no that's, doubt. that's a good thing, man. But I'm, uh, but I, I definitely do that, man. I, I think, has she been on? No, I've been working on she, but, you know, during like the pandemic and everything, he's been on the road, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. You know, uh, with, um, you know, with, with, uh, with stack and everything, um, okay. um you know, out, out, you know, doing, doing his thing. Um, but I, I've been, been, been trying to catch up to him, you know, his cousin T Wallace is trying to put it together for me. So God willing, you know, if his guys will, I, I'll have him on soon, man. For no sure. doubt. <laughs> that'd be good, man. That'd, that'd, be, that'd be a good get, man. He, I mean, he has a lot of gems. He's a great teacher too, man. Yeah, like he spends yeah. a lot of times with these kids. He came when I was, had my G League team. He came up and spent some time, and he was just down in North Carolina with Jeff McKinnis because he's coaching mm -hmm. that column column um, well, what, it, combine. combine his cousin, thing. his uh, uh, T. Wallace said that you're one of the reasons that he got into like that's why he's you know coaching high school basketball now. I guess you may have you know inspired him to to get into coaching. That's that's what his cousin said. Yep. Yeah, man, he's a great teacher. Like I said, the position of I me mean, because like you know we kind of know our spots. But I was watching him work with bigs, and it's just like. Mm -hmm. Man, like you don't even think about that as much. Like you're on that mm -hmm. baseline drive, planting your foot outside yeah. the baseline so they can't mm -hmm. get by. You yeah, know, and it's like just those little nuggets, little things. Like that. Yeah, you know, it's it's a difference. The devil is in the details, man. So that's yeah. what I would say to anybody. No matter all of you, got to have passion and mm -hmm. you got to have be focused on the details to, to to have real success. And I think that those are the keys. That's what's up. Well, talking about success, man. Much success to you guys at Vander uh, at Vanderbilt. Um, once this, you know, pandemic, all this stuff is over, I got, I got to get down. I got to get to some games, man. I got to come check y'all out, man. We love um, that. Yeah, I got, got to get down there to check, you know, check you guys out, man. And um, but we're on the much. two, man. We're on the two this this weekend. We play Mississippi Valley on the SEC Network on Sunday. We're back I'm at it. In. And next Wednesday, a really good game against Richmond. Richmond had a couple good wins. They beat Kentucky this year, so mm -hmm. we're, you know, it's going to be a good test for us. So definitely, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure I'm locked in. All the Raw Sports family, make sure y'all tune in and support Coach at, at Vanderbilt. Um, to see what they're doing down there. I'm definitely, you know, God willing, I get out there as well. And I gotta, um, I'll connect with you later. I gotta, gotta send you some, uh, some raw sports apparel, man. Give me Do that. I rock. and an address, and, and I'll send you some gear, man. You know, you know, so, so support each other, man. All right, good brother. All hey, right. God bless you, man. Bless your family and um, you know, everything you're doing. All right, coach. Same to you, man. Thank you. All right, now. Hey, um, I appreciate everybody tuning in, man. This was a, a classic episode of Legends Week, man. Um, you know, just like I said to him, um, this interview far exceeded, you know, um, anything that I, you know, all of my thoughts. I knew it was going to be classic, um, but, you know, um, all right, all right, how about this? Um, if somebody want to tap in with me, um, I I'll tap somebody in. I just want to say a few things real quick. Um, this episode of Legends Week was sponsored by Raw Sports Apparel, rawsportsapparel.com. If, if, if anybody, you know, appre you know appreciates uh, what Big Star is doing, you know, loves what I'm, if you love what I'm doing, you want to make a contribution, um, you know, financial contribution, you know, and get a gift in return. Um, support me by going to my online store, rawsportsapparel.com, uh, where I have T-shirts. This is the military green uh, T-shirt. I have black T-shirts, white T-shirts, a red one. Um, this week, I'm going to be uploading. Um, I got some new merchandise, some hoodies, some sweatshirts, uh, a classic gray hoodie and a, a classic black hoodie on the website. Um, so, you know, make sure y'all go on there and, you know, support me. It don't cost, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely free to browse. So once, you know, we, we get off the interview, uh, check out rawsportsapparel.com, you know, browse a little bit. You'll see a nice picture of me and my family, you know, um, you know, modeling the gear and all that. And, you know, uh, support it, brother, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Um, if there's anybody that's watching, I still got a little bit of audience here. If there's anybody that wants to, um, tap in real quick, send, send me a, um, you know, send me a, uh, send me a request to join real quick. Want to, want to get your feedback on the interview. We'll do that. We'll, we'll do that. I'll wait, I'll wait like 20, 30 seconds. If uh, don't nobody send me a request, cool. But uh, if somebody want to tap in real quick and um, just give a quick little reflection on the interview, um, send me a request real quick so, so I can bring you on the screen and uh, you know, get your opinion on Stackhouse, um, your opinion on, on Legends Week, and um, anything you might want to say. I'll, I'll wait for y'all real quick. If there's anybody want to join, that want to join. Um, Darnell252, appreciate you, man. Jay Stackhouse, I appreciate you tuning in. Billy Stanton, appreciate it. Mike B, I appreciate it. Dale Hunt, 717, appreciate you, big dog. Uh, just, hey, Just Tara, hey, three, I appreciate you, girl. Legends Week interviews are getting better and better, for sure. 
All right. Hey, well, uh, don't nobody want to tap in with Big Star, man. You know, um, I'll see y'all. I'll make sure y'all make sure y'all come back tomorrow. Got another classic schedule for tomorrow. Um, Hoop Legend out of New York City. Um, it, it's definitely going to be crazy. It's definitely going to be insane. Um, so make sure y'all come back. Check out Legends Week tomorrow night at 